Schmack and McGob, everybody. It's me. And with me is... Oh, yeah! Wadzilla, baby. And we got a special guest with us today. A bona fide rock star from the band Wild Stallions. Dick Twalkins is with us. Dr. Fuck, Wadzilla, what the fuck is up, gentlemen? How you doing? What's up? Why, why are you sideways and for some reason your whole scream got cut out? Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me flip my phone around. Yeah. Is that better? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I was I'm going like, to have to hold my phone all the time. I was like, holy shit, Mick Watkins on the, on the Poseidon adventure. But that's right. That's right. <laughs> it's like a goddamn nice. Lionel Richie video in here. Right. <laughs> there it is again. Check it out. Yeah, every time you turn your phone, the sound cuts out. So let's oh, hear it. that scream one more time. One more time. Yeah, we didn't hear in, it. in honor of God himself, fucking David Lee Roth. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's not coming out. It's still not? No. No. You're son of a bitch. Okay. One last Apple. time. Apple. Apple. Fuck Apple. Try to get Wait, Here we go. Mike. Okay, one last time in honor of God himself, David Lee Roth, Diamond Dave, and the metal god, Rob Alford. <laughs> I guess that'll do. Hey, can I... That'll, that, that's going to have to do. I mean, I got maybe four yeah. or five left in me, but yeah. <laughs> Let's just go with that. All right, and, and, and for me uh, to do my... In the word of Diamond David Lee Roth, I think I just shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, look at all the people here tonight. We got another special star-studded guest. I can't believe this is your first time on the uh, on the show, man. Dude, it's really so crazy. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's wild because like I actually checked today and let's say I joined your all's group, I believe, in like March of 2015. So wow. nine nine years ago, dude, and here's the first episode with yours truly, Dick Twatkins. Hey. Rob Rod bassist, Dick Twatkins. That makes that makes uh, Dick Twatkins OG. De yeah. Definitely OG. Definitely OG. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know what I was talking about? We're, we kind of switched up what episode we were doing. Originally right. wanted to do uh, something we're going to do hopefully next week, uh, ranking the BOC studio albums. Um, I thought of like three people. I was like, what about Martin Popoff? And Ralph's like, can't afford him. <laughs> How about Will Carroll? He's like, can't afford him. Like, what about Dick Twalkins? He goes, definitely can afford Dick Twalkins. Definitely can afford Dick Twalkins, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just costs $5, uh, eight pack of Little Kings, and a reach around, and I'm good. Man, so, so uh, I see, you know, because we follow you on the, on the Facebook. Uh, yeah. You've been recording lately, huh? Yes, we have. Yeah, the past, uh, I don't know, a uh, couple days, we've been stuck in the studio for 10 hours both days, finishing up the latest Wild Ride album. So it's getting nice. close, right? Um, today, I finished uh, the bass. Um, the bass is done. The drums are done. Um, rhythm guitars are done for the three latest tracks. Okay, And we're ready to drop a bombshell for you and the listeners out there. The latest three Wild Ride tracks. Oh my God, gasp. Wild Ride, oh my God. Is, uh, let's see, the latest tracks that we have written that are going to go on the first ever full length debut album of Wild Ride is going to be a song called Sins of Desire. Okay. She Looks Like Trouble. And uh, what was the other one? Fuck. Hang on. What was the other one? Oh, Selling Your Soul. Selling Your Soul. Nice. Three killer rocking tracks. So is this album going to be like a, like a concept album about Nostradamus? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, absolutely not. Okay, no. good. Then I'll be able to understand it. There you go. Uh, exactly. Can't wait to hear it. Ralph and I are both, you know, huge fans of uh, Wild Style. and uh, <laughs> Wild Ride. I'll never get it right. <laughs> I, right, know, right. I dig it though, you know, the chicks Thank dig you. it. Dude, uh, dude, the chicks definitely dig. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. And uh man, wish you nothing but the best. And uh 
Thank Hope you. Hope you get some good uh, exposure on this, play some good shows, and just keep rocking, man. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, today it was actually confirmed that April 5th in um, Indianapolis at the Black Circle venue is going to be Wild Ride and Savage Master. Oh, so, yeah. nice. Yeah, oh, that's going to be badass. I love yeah. Savage Master. Dude, they're a great band. Yep. I have a great band. We're all friends with Adam Neal and Stacey Savage um, hey, in that band. Shit. So, yeah. yeah uh, they, nice. I wish, I wish Wild Ride could, would come down. Wild Ride's like, hey, we're playing Florida, man. Like, right, oh, last summer, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know how big Florida is, you know? Florida's fucking huge, yes. Yeah, yes. It, it, would ta- it would have taken me like six hours to get to that venue. Yeah, we were in, uh, we were in Dayton, Ohio last year. I remember Dayton and... Uh, I can't remember the other place. It was like right on the outside of Orlando. Yeah, well, yeah, that's too far from me, man. That sucks, man. That's unfortunate. Yeah. One of these days yeah. it'll happen. Yeah. Book some Seattle dates too, goddammit. That'd be fucking cool too. We would love to, man. Fuck Seattle. Okay. No, nah, Seattle's cool. Seattle's cool. No, oh, no, no, it's not me. <laughs> it killed me. I mean, I, it killed me. True. You know what? I'm with you, dude. Fuck Seattle. I'm yeah. sorry, Wazzy. Damn. And fuck Nirvana too, and and Pearl Jam, and shove that needle up your ass, again. and a shotgun. That's what else you gonna do with them, right? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, funny after the rant on last week's episode, which is doing phenomenal on both YouTube and Podbean. Uh, a lot of people seem to really like that episode. I guess the the glory years are still upon us. Um, you know, I, I did the rant about the page and people complaining and stuff, and man, it didn't fail. One day after it, I started getting messages again. You know, and this guy messaged me. He goes, "Dude, dude, Chuck Charles Manson is ruining this fucking page. Do something." <laughs> so I did. Uh, I put him on a re, uh, restriction. I didn't even know you could do this shit. I put him on a restriction where he can do just one post a day. Yeah. And goddamn, did the page transform. I haven't seen the page <laughs> look this much fun in I don't know how long. And it just and this is nothing personal against Chuck. Um, I don't hate Chuck. Um, but goddamn, it's nice to see some variety back on the page. People are enjoying it. And this goes not only for him, but anybody. Man, if you just get drunk and flood the page with weird shit, you know, you bring it all down. What's great is when everybody posts different shit, but yet it's shit that, you know, is right for the page, you know? And there's a lot of great people on there that do just that, that post different stuff. Uh, But it all flows. And man, I've really enjoyed it this last week on the Facebook page and glad to see it back. And again, uh, sorry, Chuck, man, but you know, don't, don't fucking drunk post that. That'd be the best. Like some people, man, they start drinking, they turn into, they get white girl drunk and just post all this shit. And it does, it, it gobs up the page. You piss everybody off. It, don't come there looking for a fight or just trying to antagonize. People. Are, you, are you aware Ian that Chuck is gone? He's not on the page no more. Yes, uh, that <laughs> happened, I believe, a couple days afterwards. Uh, but I know, you know, he'll still be watching and stuff and like that. And, and again, you know, we met Chuck and we hung out with him, uh, you know, had a great time at Rock and Pod. But man, some people, when you get drunk, stay off the Internet, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just a damn shame. And I'm just saying this as a cautionary tale uh, to anybody else, you know, enjoy the page, but, you know, don't get all fucked up and go on there and just ruin it for everybody or go on there to antagonize people, man. Go in there. I mean, I don't want to censor what people post, but, you know, come on. You know, keep it the spirit of the page and don't try to make it your page by you post, you know, 50 things a fucking day that nobody cares about but you. You know, think of the show. And if you can't be as funny as me and Ralph, don't try. So nobody try. It's been, it's, been, it's been so cool in the group that I've only done one anti-gay post this whole time. <laughs> well, uh, Revenge of the Nerds. 
Yeah. Excellent movie. Yeah. Uh, awesome movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Well, you both of you are fags. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I haven't said anything about the Gady since. Like, <laughs> you no. Know, you know, if anybody out there says you don't like the Breakfast Club, then don't watch. Hey, idiot. How do you know I don't like the Breakfast How do you know that I don't like the Breakfast Club? I'll tell you how I know I don't like the Breakfast Club because I watched it. I didn't go back <laughs> to watch it again. So if you're going to say, don't like it, don't watch it. It's too late. I already watched it. How the hell am I going to say I don't like it if I don't watch it? Right, Ian? Right. Fuck you. Yeah. And you, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, Mick. Fuck all you breakfast uh, club faggots. <laughs> When I was when I was growing up, I had no fucking. My daddy hit me smoking <laughs> a stick of red. My daddy slept. When I was a kid, it was like, man, my dad gave me smokes, man. Fuck yeah. And we, <laughs> we drank cords. We drank cords as a little kid, and cords was illegal in Florida back then. You seen you seen smoking the band, haven't you, Ian? No, that came out in the 70s. Yeah, well, that's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Yeah, the whole basis. Cords was illegal in that movie. Yeah, and uh, yeah. that was a real thing, you know. I, it seems crazy in this day and age, but yeah, it was illegal. Oh, my, my neighbor, when I was a little kid, he was a truck driver, and he would go to Texas. In Texas, Cords was legal. Hmm. So he would bring back cases of that shit. And I, you know, I wasn't a drinker. I was underage, but I was like, shit, it's cords. It's illegal. Smoking the bed. Give me one, you know? And I, <laughs> I got drunk on illegal alcohol in Florida back then, man. It was awesome. But then you know what happened? It became legal, and all the little faggots from fucking Breakfast Club drank it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's been a banner year in the fucking Bender household, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. Horrible act. Yeah. All right, and then there's somebody else I gotta mention. Holy cow, we got a new uh, a new stalker, uh, but in a good way. Let me see if I can bring this up. Uh, I um, man, Zan something, Z A N. Man, that guy loves you, Ian. Makes me uh, all jealous and shit. Zan, Zan something, constantly leaving comments on the Almost Human page. Wadzilla and Ralph Rule, you know? Oh, hold on. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I see I just got a message from the one and only Johnny Vogan. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Chuck's totally unhinged. He's obsessed with the podcast and now wants to kill you and Ralph. Holy shit. Oh, nice. Oh, fuck. He's pissed at us now? Fuck him. I don't care. Uh, Man, you know, it's so wild. You guys attract the most insane fucking crazy people. We do, what is we do. up with that? Dude, Terrence. Now you got Chuck Charles Manson. <laughs> fucking who else? Oh. You know? <laughs> well, that's, we do. We have the the best listeners, the best fans. I mean, nobody Absolutely. can argue that. Even nobody, nobody will ever be as wacky as that Sean Anna guy. Remember that dude? <laughs> Sean Anna dude. That, oh. uh, that guy really Which, was all pins. <laughs> no, what's the name of the other guy, Ian? The one that um the one that told you I said on my radio show that uh I forgot what what did I say on my radio show that Ian sucks or something? Uh, <laughs> oh uh, like Gore, the guy from Gore. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a yeah, guy, the, yeah, whatever his name Yeah. He start he started getting uh talking shit about Daniela Hill and I booted his ass. He he was yeah. he made fun of people's looks. And nobody knew what he looked like. So me and Ian said to him, you're going to come on our show and you're going to turn your camera on or we're banning you. And right. he said, remember what he said? He goes, I don't want people to see what I look like. They're going to make fun of me. <laughs> and he made fun of everybody. It was like, banned. Oh, mm. man. Uh. Oh, fuck. I'm trying to find this fucking guy. <laughs> what's your all's? And, and what's no, your no, all's? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's your all's thoughts on the one dude? This guy's fucking crazy. Uh, Max Tuber. Oh my god, that guy. Does he ever write you guys? Dude, that yeah. guy would write me novels. <laughs> he would write. Yeah, me. same. And I wouldn't read it. I was like, "What the fuck's this guy's problem, man?" And he was doing it on the. He was really like leaving these bizarre 
things on the Almost Human page. Yeah, and yeah. I've had people write me going, dude, <laughs> this Max Super. I, go, I don't know, man. The guy's whacked out of his brain. Yeah, I don't either. I don't, I, he's a little uh a little Touched. unstable. <laughs> and, right. and that tells you, <laughs> you know, uh, who our core audience is <laughs> and who we appeal to. Uh yeah. but, no, we do. I we still, got we got some amazing fans, but yeah, we got some crazy motherfuckers. But I think it's you know, our sense of humor, uh, you know, our delivery is so different from every other show. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get the fucking the weirdos. But yeah, I can't find this guy, but anyway, uh go on Podbean and check out our comments because this guy is leaving I think he must have just discovered the show because he's leaving a review for every episode. And he loves yeah. Terrence. It might be Terrence. <laughs> you know, it has to be name. Terrence. <laughs> has to be him. <laughs> Which, oh, this is funny. There was almost a reunion of me and Terrence on another podcast. Not the world's podcast, not, you know, but America's podcast. Oh, shit. Sure. But uh, apparently his dad said, no, he's not allowed to have any interaction with me. <laughs> <laughs> but he still listens. And uh, I, I thought it was funny because he was sending somebody like terrible comments about uh, Ralph and everything. And then this person sent Ralph like, uh, hey, no hard feelings, <laughs> you know, like a day uh, after. He, he sent me a, a, a text message, you know, apologizing and all this stuff. And then Ian sends me a, a screenshot of him badmouthing me. Yeah, like the day before. <laughs> he's bad mouthing me to this guy that when he sent me the message, he's bad mouthing that guy. It's like <laughs> bad mouthing the dude. Then he goes to that dude and he bad mouths me. It's like I did write him back. I said, This is why I can't trust you. And no, yeah. stop. I mean, but the thing is, Terrence is the past. Nobody talks about Terrence no more. It's it's a done deal. And I and nobody's talking about Mark anymore. And Charles will be done talked about about three minutes. All right. But I appreciate that they still listen, so it still gives us numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> you know, they, they keep coming back for more. Like I, a battered I, wife. <laughs> all I can say, man, is when you fuck with me, man, and I forgive you, and I say to you, you fuck with me again, I'm banning you, and you're gone. That's what happened. He fucked me again, banned and gone. I, I stay mm -hmm. my word, you know? And uh, I don't know what your problem is with me, dude, but you know what? It's over. Because if you have anything to say about me, number one, I'm not going to know. And everybody out there, in case he does say anything about me, don't send me no screenshot because I just don't care. I really don't. And if he doesn't say anything bad about me, cool. But I don't care either way, you know? All I know yeah. is that, dude, I don't need negativity in my life. I have so much bullshit going on in my life now. You know what I mean? That I wouldn't wish on on all three people we were just talking about, okay? I wouldn't <laughs> wish it on them. So it's like, I don't need no more bullshit in my life. And, and I can't handle it. I can't. If you're going to fuck with me, I make you disappear. You know, like the Twilight Zone, sending you to the cornfield because you're a bad man. You're a very bad <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, and the most, mm. you know, hand, handle your liquor, you know. Be mm. like me. Be a lovable drunk who just wishes death on fans. You know, don't, you know, don't lose your shit. <laughs> you know. All right, well, enough of that. But uh, again, I'm glad to see the page getting back online and everybody enjoyed it. It really has been. Uh, a fun week. I have two mm -hmm. concert reviews. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, man. All right. I went and saw the pre crew show, which which had all right, who uh, Ted Pauly, great guitar player, the guy from Danger Danger. Yeah, uh, so I'm open for Uli John Roth. Yeah, me too. I saw him again now. Hey, he played some Danger Danger. Uh Jeff Scott mm -hmm. Soto and uh Beeler from Saigon Kick did an acoustic set. A band uh, called the Hardcore Superstars. Mm. Now, oh, and Rhino Bucket. And I gotta say, and I gotta say, man, Rhino Bucket was awesome. They got the trans testicle drummer, right? They don't, <laughs> they don't have Simon Wright anymore. 
No, 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 no. I, I think their uh, their drummer uh, transformed. I don't know. I, I mean, I watched them from afar, and then the headliners, Y and T. I went all the way up front. Mm. This guy, Ooh. this guy, just that's awesome. Be cancer, and he's up there singing better than ever and playing better than ever. What a great, great set! Now I'll tell you the most bizarre shit that happened at the show. I'm with my friends. I'm walking. And this dude comes up to me. He's like, "Dude!" And he goes like that. Dude, he had a Doctor Fuck shirt on. And this, nice. This guy was from New York. He flew down for the cruise, and he's like, "Dude, I knew Y and T. You were gonna be here. I wore my Doctor Fuck shirt." I go, "Dude, you realize there's like four thousand people here." The odds you bumped into me are great. I fucking slim to none. It was weird, you know? And it was cool, man. Uh, this guy had a doctor. For, this is that, you know, the Killers album cover. With, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a great show. Y&T kicked my ass. It was awesome. Then I saw KK Priest, LA Guns, and Bernie Witches. Mm -hmm. And this... Awesome. Uh, a friend of mine bought meet and greets for Burning Witches, but she couldn't come down. So she gave those meet and greets to this girl that I know, and that girl got me in. And the weirdest thing, we're there waiting, and the guy comes up. Who's here for Burning Witches? And we're like, hey, it's us. He's like, all right, come on in. We walk in, they give us laminates, and we go see Burning Witches. Nobody asks us for anything, not our names or, or proof that we got Bought <laughs> nothing we just went in and we met them and they were awesome and then i saw them live and the thing is if you got in you got in early so i went all the way up front and watched burning witches i was like man i ain't leaving this spot i stayed there the whole night all the way up front burning witch was phenomenal kick-ass band um then la guns very disappointed um wow yeah, I'll tell you why. Tell me, tell me, you wouldn't be disappointed by this either. Number one, they didn't, they, they didn't play "Rip and Tear," which is what the fuck, you know. But they also didn't play my favorite song, uh, "One More Reason." Wow. Or or uh, "Show No Mercy." They only played Damn. "Electric Gypsy," which rules. And uh, what's the other song they played? "Sex Action." They played "Sex Action." But then they played some of this new shit I just don't like. Then they ended the show, dude, with the Ballad of Jane. They ended the show Ugh. with the Ballad. Ugh. I yeah, thought, that kind of sucks. I thought they'd come back for a Rip and Tear. They did. I was like, that was odd. Though I will say, it's always awesome to see Tracy Guns play, though. The guy's a mm -hmm. freak of nature on guitar. And I met him before the show. We were walking around back, and he was walking with his guitar outside. And I was like, Tracy, he's like, what's up, man? I was like, what's up, dude? And I just kept walking. I should have got a picture. But uh, did, he, uh, did he play on stage or was he in the portal? Oh, he actually <laughs> did come out. Yeah, okay. I was worried about that because he, uh, Tracy has like panic issues. Yeah. There was a show mm -hmm. he played in the bathroom. He didn't go up on stage. Yeah. Uh, they were good. But then KK's Priest came out. And that was fucking phenomenal, man. You know, playing the new shit, playing, you know, Priest, Nightcrawler, Vic, uh, nice. Realms of Death, Hell Patrol, Victim of Changes, Green Man Alishi, you know, and a bunch of the KK songs. It was fucking phenomenal. Nice. That is my concert review, two of them. Did you, uh, did you happen to see Courtney at the pre cruise show? Yes, I did. I did. I went up to her. Because the thing is, when. Uh, that Izzy Presley guy, you know, the guy. You know, yeah. Him and Courtney were up on stage introducing Ted Poley. And I was like, oh, man, I got to see Courtney. But I didn't know how I was going to see Courtney. But, yeah, she came out. And she was around the bar, and I saw her, and I went up to her. Courtney, you know. And then she, she didn't realize I lived down here. She was like, oh, you're going on the cruise? I go, no, I live here. She's like, oh, you do? I go, yeah. I'm <laughs> That's why I'm here, man. So... Yeah, I nice. did get to see Courtney, and I said hi to Izzy Presley for a little bit. He didn't seem happy to see me, which is a, which is a drag, man, because I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the whole story with Izzy Presley, why he doesn't like me, is because Michael, you know, Michael Branvold had, had us both on the show, 
and I was goofing on him and stuff. But Michael Bradfield did a poll of who's better, Izzy or me, and I completely <laughs> wiped the floor. Everybody voted for me. A couple voted for Izzy, but he got so mad. He did a whole podcast bashing me. Dr. Fuck, he only does that because of Dr. Love from Kiss, and he's one of these Tommy Thayer fans. I was like, dude, this guy, <laughs> this guy doesn't know me at all, man. And then I met him at Rock and Pod. He was there the last yeah. And he, he didn't say shit. <laughs> well, remember when we went to the comedy club, he did yeah. say on stage, let me do this quick before Dr. Fuck heckles me. He said yeah. on stage that night. I was like, I'm not going to heckle you, dude. Shut up. You know? Whatever. No, I remember uh, I remember we saw him somewhere in a parking lot. I think it's probably when we were on our way to um, Waffle House. <laughs> and he, he didn't say shit. Yeah. No, but he, he knew, I was flexing, though, you know. <laughs> like, he doesn't like me, but I still find him being all right. Guy, whatever. He's not fuck him. I mean, remember his stand-up act? His stand-up yeah. act was so bad that every stand-up that came on after him had him as a fucking punchline of how horrible he yeah. is. Well, I, I think his stepdad owns Sirius, and that's why he's on there. Yeah. No, I don't know, man. All I know is <laughs> he doesn't like Dr. Fuckalicious much. What a drag. But I, I saw uh, Courtney put up some posts. I guess Jeff Scott Soto did the uh, punch lines and back lines thing. Uh-huh. And, and it did a good job, so. Right on. Right on. Right on. Happy for Courtney. All right. Uh, glad KK's Priest was good. Uh, uh, Ripper sounded good. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Freak of nature. And by the way, he liked my review. Nice. Yeah, he, he, I saw Ripper Owens like my KK Priest review. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes he does interact with me on Facebook, like on a post, he'll write something. I talk to him for a little bit. But I know he knows me because when I, I saw the three tremors that night, I sent him an invite. He added me, and then he actually wrote something like, hey, it was nice meeting you, blah, blah. So he knows who I am. Of course he does. He listens to the show every week. I am like Eddie Trunk, man. I know the stars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's on the floor. What? The name you just dropped. Oh yeah. All right. Uh all right. Let's let's get into the news and holy shit did this make me happy. I've been trying uh, to have Dick Twatkins here for the news. Oh hell yeah. 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 And this is awesome because this shit just came up on Facebook. I mean, on uh, Blabbermouth right before we went online. And it looks like the hottest tour to hit Groupon uh, this year, the Sammy Hagar tour, is in jeopardy now. Oh, shit. Yes. Uh, let's, hold on. Let me, let me read it. Uh, Sammy Hagar, 94, was recently arrested <laughs> on stage in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, His new tour, uh, The Best of All Worlds, was headlining the second stage at the St. Louis Friendship Festival, and he got arrested for indecent exposure. Uh, So I don't know if this is going to, you know, uh, derail the tour. Um, And it says... At first, I thought, like, holy fuck, the, you know, he did like what he did with Kiss and whipped his dick out. No, <laughs> the, the indecent exposure charge was he exposed 10 people to his shitty Van Hagar songs. Ooh. And uh, Ooh. they arrested him for him. It was so bad. I, was hope, so bad. I, I hope this doesn't affect his appearance at the Porta Potty Festival. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, Sinzak sent me a thing saying, like, uh, it was a post where the uh, Tickets for it had gotten reduced by like thirty eight percent, and there was a big Groupon thing. So I love seeing this shit fucking fail. Uh, it's great. What a horrible cash grab tour. And uh, again, I wish a very painful death on anybody who goes to that. You know, don't make kids. You pieces of shit. <laughs> uh, let's see what else do we got in news. Rob Halford says the Invincible Shield tour. Uh, he says about it, the new set list is absolutely lethal. And we will find out that set list tomorrow because that is when the tour kicks off in Europe. Yeah. Oh, nice. And I'm incredibly excited, but at the same time, very disappointed. There is no show 
uh, so far scheduled in my area. I don't think there's one scheduled in Ralph's area. Um, but you're in Kentucky, right? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think you get to see him at one of those big festivals and shit. Um, yeah, I am. It's like in September at Ladder Than Life. Yeah. 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 And I'm going so, for uh, sure. Psyched. Uh, I'm a, they always pull out some great, you know, uh, oldies what? and shit. So I'm right. sure it's going to be great. I, got, I, I have a question for, for Dick Twalkins. What's up, doctor? He's from Kentucky. Yep. Um, have you ever been out and about, Dick, and somebody comes up to you and says, I want you to meet my wife and my sister, and there's only one woman standing there? <laughs> Actually, yes, I have. I yes, I have. That happens a lot at the Walmart over here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Are you born, born and raised in Kentucky? I am. Born and raised right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately. Sorry about that. I know, sorry man. About that. <laughs> it's a rough life, man. All right. Next story. Uh, Bruce Dickinson on his upcoming solo tour. This is not about monsters and scenery or pyrotechnics. Um, that sucks. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I'd like to see it. Have you guys listened to the new Bruce Dickinson album? I, Ralph? I fucking love it. Yeah? I love his new album. I think it's fucking awesome. Hmm. I saw you put a review up. I, I purposely didn't watch it because I didn't know if we were going to end up reviewing it. And I always like to, you know, I don't want to know. I'll go on there. I'll like your video, <laughs> but I won't watch it because I want to give you the like. But it's like, you know, oh, I want to save it for a show. You know how biased I am with Bruce, you know? Yeah. And I, I heard a couple of the singles and I was like, not bad. I mean, I definitely enjoy what I heard. I think I heard three songs. And I enjoy it more than any of the modern Maiden shit. Oh, no, no. This is way better than the Maiden stuff. I mean, since uh, Power Slave. This is up there with uh, Chemical Wedding for me. Oh, wow. Wow. We uh oh, lost we lost Mick. Mick. Uh, I'm still here. Hey. Oh, okay. Mick, have yeah. you heard it yet? Uh, no, not really, man. Like, honestly, I'm really not, uh, not really even interested. Because uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of Bruce Dickinson. You know, not really a fan, you know, like with with, uh, with him with Maiden, once you get past peace of mind, I'm checked out, dude. I really don't give a shit. So. Yeah. Interesting. Not even Power Slave. You stop at peace of mind. I mean, Power Slave. Power, well, uh, to me, that's when the rot starts to set in, you know, and then like everything wow. past that just kind of gets worse and worse. But I do dig, though. Uh, no Prayer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark. I think those albums are pretty good. Everything else, not the biggest fan of. Fucking Deano all the way. Yeah. Iron Maiden, yeah, Iron Maiden Killers is where it's at. Yeah, that's Iron, Hell yeah. That's Iron yeah. Maiden for men. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I'd be interested in seeing this tour. The one thing I'm worried about, uh, you know, because I'm invested, because I have tickets to see Maiden in October, and he's doing a summer tour with a solo band. So by the time I see him back with Maiden in October, I hope his voice isn't shot. Right. And sometimes, I mean, that can help a singer, you know, it's like they're more, um, you know, sometimes they're worn out, but sometimes it's like they're, they're stronger because they've been practicing and shit. So, right. you know, I'm a little scared. Um, cause I think they're going to change the set list a little bit. And I don't know. I mean, there's shit I want to hear that I probably won't. But I'm gonna pray to the Lord tonight that I okay. plays nothing but those shitty songs you love. <laughs> nice, thank you, thank you. I need that. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, next story. Uh, let's see. What do we got? What's interesting? What's interesting? Sebastian Bach on Skid Row's unwillingness to reunite the classic lineup. He says. I honestly think it's a business thing. And I kind of agree because I think they don't want to be in the business of having to deal with Sebastian Bach. <laughs> uh, it's pure and simply, it comes down to that, man. They must really hate this motherfucker because, I mean, they would make way more money with him, but they still stick to their guns. And I kind of respect that. You have to, man. As, yeah. You know, as much as I'm so not interested 
in Sk- I, I'm I'm mildly interested if Sk- if Sebastian was back because I'm not the hugest Skid Row fan. You know, right. I don't hate them, but I, I think they're incredibly overrated. I don't hate, but uh, uh, I think Sebastian Bach's new song kicks a lot of ass. It is pretty damn good. I gotta agree. Awesome. But yeah. I don't want him in Skid Row. I like Eric way more. Yeah. yeah. Kind of um, I love Sebastian. I, I think he would, man, that's somebody I'd want to fucking party with, but probably for one night and then I'd be done. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is <laughs> enough. This is enough. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anything interesting? Kind of a slow news week. Oh, Ralph, have you heard about this new uh, Bon Scott film? Yeah, they said it was a uh, biopic. Then they said it wasn't a biopic. Yeah, hmm. and apparently it's not going to deal at all with ACDC. Oh, right. It's, yeah, it's about him growing up, and I hate shit like that. I say, who know? cares about that? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the thing is that Bond did have a very interesting life. Hmm. Or... ACDC, that song Jailbreak is actually what he went through. He was in jail before he oh. he was in the hospital from a bad motorcycle accident before ACDC. He was a background background singer to a band that kind of got big, and then he joined this hippie band called Fraternity. It was a lot mm-hmm. of crazy, and he did all this shit before he was thirty. You know, he lived. Yeah. Bon Scott lived a life of a thousand men. In 32 years, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, and I get that, you know, but it's like, it's kind of like the Twisted Sister documentary that, you know, stops right before they make it big. That was a good like, documentary, though. Yeah, it's good, but God damn it, give me the other shit. That's what I really want. I've said this a million times when I read, you know, Rockstar's autobiographies. I always skip in the beginning. I don't care as much about your fucking childhood. I want to hear when you made that decision to make solo albums, you know, or that bad concept album and it all went south. You know, right. I find that I'm the same way. Yeah. And then I'll go back and I'll read the childhood and stuff. And I wouldn't mind it as much if they said, hey, we're making a new trilogy about Bon Scott. You know, I want to see the ACDC shit. I mean, I'm going to watch it regardless, but God damn, I would love to see something document this I, time in ACDC. I heard of a Bon Scott movie like over a decade ago that was supposed to star his son. Do you remember that? Oh, I didn't I didn't even know he had a son. Yeah. yeah his son was supposed to be in the Bon Scott story that never happened. That was over 10 years ago. I want to see a fucking Elder movie. That's what I want to see. Oh, I, I, I first date... <laughs> First That'd be the fucking theater, cool. I'd go see that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I love sad movies, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to give you guys a story, and then I'm going to go pee. Oh, okay, I'll let you guys talk about this one. Kirk Hammett says, Phil Demo's guitar lead in Carrie King's Idol's Hands is the best solo of the year so far. What says you guys? Hmm. I didn't pay attention. And I'm going to go pee. All right, right. we'll talk about whatever then. (laughs) To me, I will go ahead and say it that I think the best guitar solo of this year is on this release right here, Judas Priest, Invincible Shield. And I'm going to go ahead and say it that I think it's on the track Gates of Hell. That's some slamming shit right there, dude. I got to tell you, Mick, I was very surprised by the song because I know you were liking everything they were releasing. I was hating it. Oh, I was, yeah. And then yeah. the last one, that Serpent and the King, when they let, released that one, I was like, ooh. Right. That, that was some mind blowing shit right there. And then yeah. when I heard the album, this album smokes. Yeah. I thought I was not expecting it to be this good. I really, right. You know? Well, like, honestly, when Panic Attack came out, the first single, I was kind of like, man, this is kind of, I mean, it's good, you know, but, uh, it's kind of stock to me, you know? And then each single after that, Trial by Fire and Crown of Horns and then Serpent the King, I thought each song past that started getting better and better. But that's just me, you know? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. We'll get into that a little later. Right. 
I, I didn't hear that solo, Ian, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, me, again, I think I talked about the last episode. I thought the Carrie King song was all right. It didn't blow me away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked Mark's voice on it, you know. I thought he sounded good, but overall it left a little to be desired. But then again, you know, when it comes to Slayer, I've always been a Hanneman guy. You know, his songs are always my favorites uh, for the most part. But uh, all right, next story. What we got here? Anything worth the shit? Oh, this sucks. Uh, Scorpion singer Klaus Mine is recovering from complex spinal surgery. Oh, damn. Yeah, that sucks because he's like fucking old as dirt. I was going to say, he's probably close to 80. What did I say here? 75. 75, close enough. 75. Yeah, you know, Scorpion started the year I was born. Damn. Yeah. And, I, and I'm 59 years old. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you know, and you brought up a great point in the past, Ralph. Like, I always bring up great points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right again, boss. Uh, but no, I think he's one of those, especially nowadays, because Scorpions, I mean, they have respect, but they haven't put out an album that I think people really go crazy about in a long, long time. Go crazy for albums anymore, Ian. But uh, no, I think like he's going to be one of those when he passes away. Everybody's going to be talking about how amazing mm-hmm. he is. He'll, 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 he'll be a lot of people main picture on facebook yeah <laughs> <laughs> you write about that not the big right. bad shit. you know hey i gotta say i'm a little like that because when brad delp died i always knew yeah brad delp's all singer but when he died i was like dude that guy's one of the greatest singers ever mm-hmm. oh fuck yeah what he did yeah, but- more than a feeling those high notes i mean gee he would, he would do that live yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and what a sad thing that he didn't do more in his lifetime. Yeah. You know what I mean? That Boston was one of those bands that didn't put out albums very often. Uh, he didn't do too much outside of Boston. But that voice, I mean, no, I oh, my God. I always liked the voice, but, man, it took him to die for me to realize what a amazing freak of nature vocals he had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It was and what a sad story, too, you know, to end up fucking, you know, killing himself. And I never you know. got to see him live, and I had my chance. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I never saw him live either. I so pissed yeah, me either. Off. I was so pissed off on third mm-hmm. stage that I didn't go to the show. Oh, because you hated the album so much? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't buy, and that was my only chance to see Brad Dell. I did see Boston. They had that singer that they found uh, on YouTube that worked at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That guy, yeah, they, <laughs> they worked at Home Depot, did a video on YouTube singing Boston, they hired him. Dude, that guy is awesome. He looks, Man, what? <laughs> he, looks like he works at, at Home Depot, too. <laughs> but man, that guy could sing his ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. What happened Danny to him? Richard is over there. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the one, and I even said it when uh, we met Michael. Uh, Stripe or Stipe, whatever the what's his name? Michael Michael Sweet. <laughs> Michael Stipe. Striper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had told him, man. I was impressed. When I found out he was singing with Boss, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. This fucking guy, he did a good job. He I did. Lie. Well, he's an amazing singer, that's why. Still is. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I never realized what a good singer he is because all his songs suck. You know, yeah, but then I also because you like <laughs> Breakfast Club. Yeah, and I hate Jesus. That has a lot to do with it. <laughs> um, are you guys interested at all at this new Bon Jovi documentary? Of course. I want to see it. I'm not a Bon Jovi fan, but I love rockumentaries. Yeah. What do you think, you know Dick what? Watkins? Are you a Bon Jovi <laughs> fan at all? I, not really, man. I'm going to pass on it. <laughs> you know what I watched not too long ago? It was a damn good documentary. Millie Vanilli. Oh, shit. Okay. I still haven't watched that yet. I heard yeah. good things. Though. It was good. It was good. So if I'm going to watch that, of course I'm going to watch Bon Tony. You got to watch the Bon Jovi yeah. one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to find out more about Tico Torres. You know. Of course. Yeah. His, his inspirations, his dreams, and his humble beginnings. Frankie and the Knockouts. You ever heard of that band? Frankie and the I Knockouts. love Frank. That song. Uh, what was their big hit? I forgot. I loved it. But Tico Torres fucking... was the, was their drummer. 
Yeah. God damn it. What is that wow. fucking song? Um, I like to beat my wife up. Was it that one? No. No. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's like an 80s one hit wonder. But uh, having, having, a, having a sex orgy with minors. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> Love that song. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great. That song was very controversial when it first came out because they thought they were talking about little kids, but he was actually like talking about like fucking people who work in a coal mine. Yeah. My- <laughs> very misunderstood. Yeah, very fucking misunderstood. Fucking miners. Yeah, I mean, what the hell? Right. Yeah. You know, sometimes people's minds just go right in the gutter. Right, uh, right, right. I mean, what yes. the fuck? You talking about little kids? I'm talking about miners. <laughs> you better. Yeah. Yeah. Now was this song was this song eighties or gaties? Gaties. Eighties, okay. Anything gotcha. after eighty four that wasn't trash is gaties. Uh okay. sweetheart. Gotcha. That's the name of the song. Sweetheart. Yeah. I'm have to check this out. Yeah. Oh, it, it's awesome. It's uh, it's okay. like uh if I had to compare it to something like it'd be like Toto or Ambrosia, you know, okay, that okay. kind of shit. Gotcha, but, gotcha. Uh, I like that stuff. I, I love Toto. I've been Toto's all right. I've been getting into Toto lately. You know who got me into Toto is Connor Strat. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because he donated for me to do a track by track with Toto, and I ended up really liking the album, and I looked into a couple other ones, and I own some um, some Toto albums thanks to uh, Q. I'm going to cue Ian on this. I got some free Toto albums from my friend, Ruben De La Rosa. I love that guy. That's right. Um. Yeah, I mean, they're incredible musicians. I mean, there's so much shit that people don't realize. You know, uh, Steve Luthiker played on, you know, like Michael Jackson. and this, Look at those Little Kings knocking them back. I love that. Dude, Little love Kings them. roll. Yeah. Um, and and Je- Jeff Porcordo or whatever his name is, the drummer, you know, on he died. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he was on all kinds of shit. That, like, wow, he played on this, he played on that. Uh, amazing musicians. Rosanna, yeah. what a great song. Africa's mm-hmm. awesome. I love that I song. love Hold the, Hold the Line, man. This my, is great. Favorite, my favorite is You Supply the Night, baby, I'll Supply the Love. You know that one? Nope. It's off the first album. It's a it's a banger, man. You know? It's a good one. As the kid. I love I love they did the uh, intro mus- uh, instrumental music to uh, David Lynch's Dune. Loved it. Loved it. All right. What else we got here? Oh, the band we're talking about in a little while here. Judas Priest, Ian Hill on possibility of playing with KK Downing again. He says, I think it's gone a bit too far for that now. <sighs> what a drag. And, you know, that, that is a drag. And... Uh, Man, it seems like Ian really has it in for him. No, and, KK, and KK recently uh, said in an interview that he believes it has nothing to do with Rob. That if right. Rob had his say, KK would be back. He but he's saying, he's saying all things in this band are controlled by Glenn and Jane Andrews, the manager. Right. And I can't, I can't remember if Jane is. I think uh, she's Glenn. Ian's sister. Uh, that could, I think she's Glenn's old lady too. Oh, I'm not, oh shit. I'm not quite sure yeah, on that. You know, uh, Rob Hoffer's sister was married to Ian. Right. Gotcha. Right. Uh, initially uh, Ian was going to marry Rob Hoffer, but that wasn't legal back then. So he <laughs> took the sister. I, I did. I, I have a news report coming out, I think tomorrow about this. And what mm-hmm. I say in my news report is actually Jane Andrews is a shitty manager. She is. I agree. Really think about it, man. Look, the last time I saw Judas Priest was with Ian, actually. Yeah. We went to see him at the Hard Rock. Uh, fast, Great show. Fast forward a month or two later, I went and saw him Iron Maiden at a fucking huge arena that was maybe five times the size of the event. saw Priest. Oh, oh, shit. Man. Why is Priest not playing these huge venues? Well, I think the one thing with Priest uh, is Priest, you could almost say... I, I don't know. I, I love it, but I can see Judas Priest over tours and made him make themselves look bigger, especially in the U.S., made him make themselves look bigger by playing less shows, but they get yeah. more people to go, especially in America. People know 
okay, Iron Maiden has very limited fucking dates. So right. people will travel and do all that shit to where, like, priests are like, oh, priest is coming around. Priest is coming around. It, it's no big deal. With Especially with Maiden in America, it's more of an event. And it's been that way, uh, you know, ever since Bruce came back. Right. And I think they do that because I think Maiden knows if Maiden did a tour like Priest did of the U.S., their sales would not be as impressive, mm-hmm. you know, but they're kind of doing like Maiden does what Man of War wishes they could do. You know, Man of War is like, oh, we're too busy to tour the U.S. And oh, we can't fit in the club when the reality is if they did a big tour, the sales would be shit because nobody gives a fuck about Man of War except for gay fucking boomers. And me. <laughs> and That's me. what I'm saying. And I'm, Ralph. I'm, 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 I'm straight. I believe. I'm, Are you sure? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm now, now I'm straight. And uh, I believe I'm Gen X. Isn't Gen X 1965? I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, Gen, I'm Gen X. Oh, you're yeah, Gen X is like 65 to 81, I believe. Yeah, I'm Gen X. Yeah. You fag. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's the case. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. Look. And, and, and really, it, I mean, if you put Priest, I, I think it's, un, you know, it's unfortunate reality. If you put Priest in big venues, I think ticket sales would suffer. Uh, sure. Because that's, it. That's why they don't play big venues. Right. Yeah, but theaters. I mean, you're saying you're saying she's a shitty manager, and I agree she has some shitty tactics because I think the right thing to do is to bring KK back. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, you say you saw Made in a bigger place, but I think like again, it, it just has to do with they do limited shows, and Priest will yeah. pretty much play anywhere except, unfortunately, Florida and fucking Seattle. Right. Oh, they, always, they always play Florida. I saw the firepower two times. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, and the thing is, and the thing is, which, you know, we know this, but I'm just having to say it, is Maiden had Eddie. Oh, of course. You know? Yeah, no. That's, Maiden that's, has Eddie. That's and that's a huge part of it, man. Yeah, and they have yeah. fans like Mark Daly. I mean, come on. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I can't. They got fans like Stephen Kirsch. Stephen Kirsch didn't give a fuck about them back in their heyday, you know. And he <laughs> likes the new shit. That's what blows my mind. Uh, People uh. who like the new shit, you know, like I like. Wow. I like the long song off the last album. Yeah, yeah. and you're wrong. That shit's terrible. I, I thought it was horrible. Song. That shit's fucking That's garbage. Sh- but what was the last album? Sin Shih Tzu or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking ter- great album cover though. <laughs> oh, it was cool as hell. Right. Good T-shirts, shitty music. That's majority uh, of Maiden's career. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Ace Frehley accidentally sets off guitar smoke effect while performing on Monsters of Rock Cruise. Yeah, I've yeah, seen that video. <laughs> and the funny thing is that was the second mistake of the show. The first one is when they plugged his guitar into the fucking amp. <laughs> and people heard that shit. I mean, I'm, I'm just kidding. That, that new album is... The best album ever. I listened to <laughs> I listened to Space Invader today. That's a fucking awesome album. Dude, Space Invader smokes, man. I think that's that album. I do too, man. I do too. I, I think, think you that's... guys smoke something. <laughs> not cocky and not cock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you smoking that sweet Chiba. There you go. There that you go. sticky icky. Oh my god. Yeah. That's a great trickster album. Oh, here's another funny story. I know it's it comes uh, later in like what I'm scrolling down and shit, but fuck it, might as well talk about it now. Uh, Steve Brown came out and said basically like he had to rescue Ace because a lot of his solo albums had a lot of filler. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and what did you do? What, did, uh, Dick? Are you a fan of this new Ten Thousand Volts? Oh man, uh, where do I start with this? Yeah, this week I've got a review. Uh, um, I'm actually uh, coming later this week, but uh, you know, at first, dude, I didn't really expect much, you know, because over the last couple years, Ace Frehley's playing live has been fucking awful, and each year it gets worse and worse to where it's it's humiliating and it's embarrassing, you know. But when the first single came out, Ten Thousand Volts, I will say that I fucking love, love that song, dude. 
I love that song. I I think it I, I think it's one of Ace's best songs of his career. I love it. How Regardless about of Cherry Medicine. Oh, I fucking hate that song, dude. <laughs> awful. <laughs> fucking awful. Cherry Medicine. Yeah, you're the one. It's just uh awful vocals. The music sounds like uh, Bleak 182 or Weezer or something. Yeah, not, yeah, you know, it sounds like Miley Cyrus type shit. I can totally hear that. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, dude. I think majority of that release is pretty damn good, I will say. I will say. Fighting for Life rules. That's the best song on her. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep yeah. drinking those little kings. Oh, I will. <laughs> I like the instrumental a lot, and I like uh, yeah. 8,000 Volts. Three songs. That's it. Right. Right. What were your thoughts on the song Blinded? I didn't like it, man. Blind, you know, I, Blinded. I, I, yeah. I, I actually preferred the Thomas Dolby song. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that song's pretty fucking cool, honestly. Yeah. It blows away the 78 album, I'll tell you that. It's fucking phenomenal. It's a Smoke great another album. one. <laughs> Smoke another one, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, when you think of Kiss solo albums, you know, uh, there's Let Me Rock You by Peter Chris, and, yeah. you know, there's 10,000 Volts. <laughs> well, somebody Ralph just saw... Dave Manichetti says he would like to make a new Y&T studio album. And uh, fucking A, man. I think it's awesome. You know, he's, you know, fighting the cancer and still out there doing it. Did he play uh, Dirty Girls when you saw him? No, unfortunately, he didn't play anything from Earth Shaker, my favorite Y&T album. Mm. Did he play Contagious? No. I love that fucking song. I know YT fans hate it, but they played Summertime Girls, and I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> well, you know he's going to play that, but what a oh, shitty they song. They played the last couple times that song. Oh, really? They don't, they, dude, even if you watch the YT documentary, they're like, we don't really like this song, and it became a big hit. So they wouldn't play it. Well, they played it the last time. And I got to say, <laughs> it was a little better because they didn't have the dated 80s keyboards. Dated, dated, you know, he did it on guitar. It was all right. It's still, I was like, dude, I'd rather hear Dirty Girls or Hurricane instead yeah. of that. But they did do Tokyo Midnight, which is a rare one. And even more rare, they played Struck Down off the second album, which they never play anything when they were called Yesterday and Today. And he did because it's 50 years. They've been doing it for 50 years now. And it's Smoke. Mean Streak, my favorite song by them. Smoked it, man. Rock and Roll is going to save the world. Uh, they they it was a solid set, man. It was pretty badass. Awesome. Uh, shit. I just passed the story I want to talk about. I can't remember now. Uh oh. Um, Gene Simmons announced uh solo dates with the Gene Simmons band. What do you guys think about that? Would you be interested in go seeing the Gene Simmons band? Totally. I would. I would love to see it. Yeah, he plays charisma and stuff like that. Bring that down here. Right, right. You know, and of the Kiss dudes, out of Gene, Paul, Peter, and Ace, Gene's the only one left that can still go. Yeah, he's, you still, know? I mean, he can, he's still got the voice. Right, and he can play, you know, um, um, his bass great on stage still. He can sing. Gene's the man. Uh, I have to agree with you guys. I would go yeah. see the Gene Simmons band. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Same thing you guys said. I think he still sings well. Um, yeah. I think it'd be an interesting set list. Yeah. Um, you know, you know. hopefully it comes towards me. But, yeah, I would check that out. Uh, out of everybody who's left, Gene would be the one that I would go see. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Hopefully he adds uh, to the set list. Not for the innocents. Wow. I would love to fucking. Love yeah, to hear that, dude. That's one he's ne that Kiss never played live. Right, right, right. That's a shame. Yeah. I want to right. see while the city sleeps. You want to That'd be cool about, too. You want to talk a rare deep track while the city sleeps or or secretly cruel? Mm -hmm. I don't know or secretly cruel live. Right, that'd be cool too, man. Yeah. Or good girl gone bad. Boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, well, Al Jurgensen uh, says he's going to end ministry for the 100th time. Bullshit. Uh, but I like what he's saying here. Uh, he's saying there, there's two records left. 
Uh, they just put out Hopium for the Masses, mm. uh, which I enjoyed. Cool. And they're doing a re-recording of the first album uh, with Sympath- Sympathy. Uh, interested to hear that. I mean, I love the original, but I love that Gaty shit, you know? Right. I think but it's a good album, too. The shocking news, and I think is very good news, he says the absolute last album he's going to do is him and Paul Barker. Uh, really? Which, you know, Paul Barker has been absent from ministry since insomnia Nama or whatever it's that album that's you know same way backwards and forwards uh yeah. but to most people that's the classic era is when it's al and paul barker mm-hmm. um so i think that's great they finally mended their relationship it's kind of you know almost like a mustaine and ellison situation where mm-hmm. uh you know there was lawsuits uh, there was questions about who contributed and what and everything. But, of course, you know, <laughs> my favorite ministry albums all have Paul Barker on them. Um, yeah. And, again, I just think it's great that they mended their friendship. And uh, that, that to me, is a classy way to go out. And I feel like this really is. I mean, Al's like 65 now. Uh, Shit. And he's made no secret about he doesn't like to tour. Uh, but I think it shows, like, some cool maturity, like, this is the way I really want to go out with the guy who, you know, my biggest partner. Rise partner in crime. In the shit. So when I saw, I got about that. I, yeah. saw, I saw a ministry not too long ago. They opened for Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper. Right, right. Yeah. Dude, all they did was songs I loved. That's, That's cool shit. Big Mata, Thieves, uh, and yeah. they only played songs from those three albums and one that's really from the early days. I don't, I don't know. I don't like that crap. Yeah. See, I, I like that song. That's crap. one I'd love to hear live. Well, what hmm. what's the name of their hit when they were uh, the really early stuff? They played that one. Yeah. Oh, I'm not uh, an effigy or whatever. No. Uh, no, no, it's not that one. Uh, that's It's on that album. But um, Right. Word. Fuck. I'm having a brain fart. But it's my favorite song on the album is the one that Ralph saw live and didn't like. I'm gonna look uh, it up real quick. And the rest of that set was all shit I wanted to hear. Yeah, I'm glad yeah, they played no shit from Filth Pig and crap like that. Filth Pig, I like, man. <laughs> I love Filth Pig. I, that, yeah. I love Filth Pig. That's what turned me off to them. And then I was on a roll. I love the Land of Milk and Honey. I love yeah, terrible t- uh, thing to taste. And and my favorite is Psalm Six Nine. Yeah, that I'm rolls. That's what I was like, what the fuck is it? I saw that tour, by the way. I still wanted to go see him, but still, it's like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Filth Pig, I thought, um, was their last really good album. Yeah. Oh, I, I love really a lot song. of shit they. I love a lot of shit they've done after that, but Filth Pig was a 180, man. It was one mm-hmm. like even you know I loved Ministry at the time, and at right. first I didn't get it, but man, later on when I got it, I was like, fucking a. Yeah, it it's heavy hard. as shit, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Foreigners, Mick Jones finally revealed uh, what most people probably had, you know, an idea that something was majorly wrong. And he has Parkinson's disease. That sucks. Yeah. So, Man. yeah, that sucks. Um. Let's see. Oh, uh, Jay Weinberg, former uh, Slipknot drummer, has joined not only in infectious grooves but suicidal tendencies. Oh shit! That's got to that's got to be a hit to the fucking wallet. Oh man, you know. But fuck it, I love infectious and suicidal. <laughs> he is a great drummer, so I'm happy for him. And he's out of Slipknot, so I'm doubly happy for him. <laughs> you know, that's cool. Shitty band. Uh, but not yes. makes but not makes me miss Sammy Hagar. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Uh let's see. Anything else? Nah, I say fuck it, man. I say fuck it. We go into the album. And uh, like I said, you know, originally this was gonna be a BOC episode and Ralph chose wisely. It's a hot topic. Right. The new Judas Priest album. Is that the uh, colored vinyl? No, did you black. say colored vinyl, or is that a bad thing to say? <laughs> it says black, heavyweight black vinyl, 
And it's my friend Jay Man that always buys me shit. He got yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, this is one. I'll go into it a little bit first and pass it on to you guys. Uh, of course, excited about a new Judas Priest album. Uh, most people agree Firepower was a return to form from this band. Mm -hmm. So there was high expectations. But then when they started talking about it, uh, Richie Faulkner said there's going to be progressive elements. And that got a lot of people scared because... Unlike Ralph, a lot of people did not like Nostradamus. And, uh, that's not what they want out of Judas Priest. And people were worried it was going to have that kind of sound. And then when they finally released the first single, uh, Panic Attack, that was what the minute that song kicked in and I heard those like keyboards and shit, I was like, no, uh -oh. no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and that kind of like almost ruined the whole song for me at first, you know, because I just couldn't get that out of my mind. I heard the next single didn't do much for me. Then I heard the single after that. I really didn't care for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, so by the time the last single came out, The Serpent and the King, I didn't even check it out. I, I, mean, I saw it was posted and stuff, and I was like, no, not interested. I was scared this was going to be you know, just a, a horrible album and like, fuck, they should just stop with firepower. And I think that's the thing you kind of have to be, think about and be honest with. I know a lot of times we say we want new music from these legacy bands, but then you think about it, like, do you really? And if you go see them live, it's like, don't you already have in your mind what you want to hear? And it's nothing new. You know, you want to hear these classics and shit like that. But in one hand, you hope they put out something that you like. But the hard thing is here is, you know, with legacy bands, you have these albums that you grew up with, that you've had years to digest and make an impact. Uh, you know, but, you know, when you're younger, you're more open to shit. Uh, you know, I remember when when I was growing up, bands I put out, you know, they would put out new albums and they're like, yeah, yeah, I want to hear this live. I want to hear that live. And nine times out of 10 now, it's like, oh, I hope they don't play too much new shit. So I think I'm just as guilty as everybody, you know, old time fans that don't buy the new shit. Like, what do you want? Do you just want to hear the old shit or do you want to hear new shit? Um, were you guys excited about this album? You know, were you disappointed by the singles? Uh, you know, let's go into that before, you know, leading up to this before we get into the album. What were you right. thinking about this one, Dick Twackins? Uh, well, dude, like Judas Priest is in my top five bands of all fucking time, dude. So, of course, you know, news for a new album. I was totally hyped. Man. I'm like, fuck yes, this is great because it's been six years since um, the last one, you know. And with that release, they were on a roll completely with Firepower. And uh, I've seen them on tour Actually, which is funny, the last time I seen them was at Louder Than Life, I believe in 2021. And it was at that show that Richie had his heart attack. Oh, yeah. shit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was there, you know. And, dude, that night, you know, like, even though he was sick and, like, even on stage, I was watching them. And I could honestly tell that he was looking really pale and he wasn't really, like, wanting to move around much. I was like, something is going on with this dude, you know? But that night, regardless of that, they sounded so fucking good, dude. I mean, even with Sneep on stage, they killed it. Halford sounded great. Ian, Scott, Richie, Amy Sneep, they killed it. So seeing that really, like, you know, I can't wait for this um, new album. And then when Panic Attack came out, have to be honest, I was kind of, I thought it was good. I was like, okay, it sounds to me like standard modern priest. You know what I mean? I wasn't blown away by it. You know, I liked it, but I was kind of wanting a little bit more, you know. I, I didn't think it was uh, up to any of the singles released from Firepower. Then I heard um, the next one, which was, what was the second single? It was Trial by Fire. Trial by Fire. I liked that one more. I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, this isn't the standard, like, painkiller, thrashy Judas Priest. You know, this is the more melodic, maybe Scream for Vengeance, Defenders era. That one was cool. Then they um, released Crown of Horns. And unlike you guys, I fucking love that song, dude. I thought that song was killer. I was like, okay, this is the direction that I want Priest to go in. 
You know, let's get away from the painkiller type stuff. Let's get back to the more melodic, just heavy metal phrase. And then with uh, with Serpent and the King, totally knocked my dick in the dirt. I'm like, this is like free will burning for 2024. You know, and you know, I thought it was fucking awesome. You know, Ralph. Um. Well, unlike unlike Dick, there, I um, <laughs> I, I didn't like the singles. I didn't like none right. until I heard Serpent and the King. Mm. I was like, holy shit! Now this is what I'm talking. About. This right. is what I hear from Judas Priest. I mean, not just this, but you know, and, uh, I didn't like the first one, well, the Panic Attack. I didn't like it. I still don't like it. Yeah. I didn't like Crown of Horns, the kind of horns. I didn't like um, <laughs> uh, Trial by Fire. I like Testament Trial by Fire more. And you know how I feel about Testament. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Crown of, and then, you know, I got an illegal download. Somebody sent me it. Mm. And, Was it Mr. X? Uh, no, actually, no. Yeah. Mr. X, Mr. X is being a dick to me. Oh, no. Hey. He sent you the new Liam Gallagher. Did you check that out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Nice. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I heard uh, the, the crown. I, I was like, this is more like it, man. Hmm. Yeah, it was heavy and stuff. But here's the thing. And I will, and I know both of you will probably disagree with me on this. The, this uh, I love. I, I like Firepower more. I still think Firepower is a better album, but mm. like Firepower, I didn't like the opening track. I didn't like this uh, Panic Attack, and I didn't like the song Firepower. I really? Just, yeah, I felt it was kind of. Mm. Oh, that's just a piece. People that like Painkiller, right? Kind of generic. Yeah, where where that Crown thing could have been like a Painkiller type, but I think it has more kick-ass element that I like. Mm. So, yeah, man. I was very impressed by uh, by that song. And then I heard the album, and I'll let you know what I feel about it. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I got to pee again, so you guys talk some more about Priest. I'll be right back. Uh, well, you want to go into the song? Uh, you guys can take the, the go ahead. opening track. Hey, hey Mick, go, go ahead with... Uh, with, with Panic Attack. Tell okay, us. Panic Attack. Okay, track number one. Panic Attack. Okay, you know, I got to agree with you, uh, uh, Ralph. I mean, it's a good song. It's a good first track. But compare it to the rest of this release, the rest of the, like, upbeat, like, heavy songs, I think this is probably the worst one on the album, you know? And, uh, I mean, to me, you kind of nailed it when you said that it was just kind of written to appease people that want to hear painkiller. Yeah. That's totally what it sounds like. It sounds like a fan serviceable song. And if you take the, the structure of panic attack and if you take the structure of painkiller, they are written the same exact way. You, you know, um, the lead is in the same spot. It kind of ends the same, you know, panic attack, panic attack. The painkiller. It's structured exactly like painkiller. I, I hear that now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good song, but uh, honestly, it's probably one of my least favorite tracks on the album. And then what's funny is, is one of the reasons why I like it. I mean, I like it. I'm not wanting to shit on it, but it was funny. A couple of weeks ago, I was riding out to a buddy of mine's house. And uh, let's see, I was driving on the interstate. And whenever I was driving on the interstate, it was fucking pouring down rain. And it was at nighttime, and I couldn't see good. And cars were flying fucking past me, and I couldn't see. And all of a sudden, that song comes on. Panic attack, panic attack. And it drove me fucking crazy. I almost had a panic attack listening to that song. So for that reason, I think I kind of might like it a little less. You know, because it always makes me think of that moment. You know. But it's a good song, you know. All right, on. What do you think you in a panic attack? Uh, well, you know, first single, excited to hear it, and as soon as that shit started out at the beginning, I was like, "Ugh, yeah, ugh, this is like turbo, but worse." I don't know who like who okayed that shit. 
you know, like it's by you Halford. Know, <laughs> I expect a little bit more out of Andy Sneap, you know. He should have said like, uh, uh-uh, uh, nope, uh, uh-uh. uh, uh, horrible, and it kind of tainted my whole experience with the song. I just couldn't get over that fucking horrible intro. Mm. And it wasn't until I got the album and, you know, listened to it as a whole and I kind of got over it a little bit. Now I fucking love Panic Attack. Cool. Uh, I think it's a great track and a great opener. Aside from it, still, every time I listen to it, it's like, I wish I knew how to edit it. You know, like if I had some kind of software where I could take that out and, you know, and then it kicks in, I'd be like, oh, this is great, you know. Hmm. But uh, let me see to my notes here uh yeah again you know who fucking okayed that shit but when it kicks in to me it's all guns blazing uh Mm -hmm. no pun intended um but i think it's something you know and ralph has brought this up before and a lot of people have brought it up i think painkiller was a blessing and a curse for this band yeah Uh, because it did bring them back credibility you know after turbo uh, you know, the change in sound and kind of like the, you know, the lameness of Ram It Down. You know, they come back with Painkiller. It's a big hit. The fans love it. But it seems like they're stuck in that. We got to do a Painkiller. We got to do a Painkiller. Right. And I miss, you know, the, you know, all all the pre-sounds before that. You know, Ralph, you say this is your issue with Painkiller, which I feel is a perfect fucking album. But you said you like the you know change in the flow, the the light and the shade of other Priest albums, and that was missing mm-hmm. from Painkiller. I get that. And to me, aside from Angel of Retribution, which I think sounds like an old school Priest, you know, because it does have a lot of different shit. Uh, the rest of the albums, you know, uh, well, take away fucking nuts, not dumbass, but. <laughs> yeah, they're just stuck in this painkiller fucking mode that I wish they would get away with and go back to more like either early 80s priest or 70s priest, which is, you know, right. my, my favorite album, Stained Class. Um, but no, the first one kicks ass, man. I fucking love it. Um, definitely grew on me. And I'll go into the next song, which is The Serpent and the King. I haven't talked about Panic oh. Attack. Oh, okay. You go. All right, Panic Attack. It sucks. The next song is called Serpent and the King. <laughs> uh, kick-ass song, man. It was the one that I heard, and I was like, oh, now this is what I'm talking about. This is a priest I love. It does have the painkiller element, but they also throw in, like, you know, some elements that were different, kept mm-hmm. me interested. See, they did this with the song Firepower, but I don't think it, it achieved what it was meant to achieve, and I think the Serpent... And the king totally achieves it. To me, that's a modern Rob Halford solo band featuring Ian Hill. Classic. <laughs> I love it. Nice. Ian? Uh, yeah, this one, like I said, when it was released, I didn't even bother checking it out because I knew the album was coming out soon. And I was like, I just didn't want to be disappointed anymore. You know, so I'm like, eh, I'll just fucking wait. This one came on, fucking holy shit. Okay, Mm -hmm. this is fucking Priest. This sounds good. Um, It's catchy. Yeah, it's modern Priest, but there's still elements there. One negative I will say about this album, though, and unfortunately it's just, I think, the way it has to be. This album sounds like Richie Faulkner playing with himself. And by that, I mean, like you used to have it go back between KK and Glenn. And I used to love, even in the old days, when you'd open up the album, it would tell you, okay, this is KK. Mm -hmm. You know, this is Glenn. But you would hear the different styles and the way they complemented each other. And I I think to an even greater effect of, you know, you would compare it to uh, Dave Murray and... and, uh, Adrian Smith. uh, Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was that interplay that you loved. Uh, but now it's like, it's still twin guitars, but you could tell it's the same guitar player just playing different shit, you yep. know? I agree. And what are you going to, I mean... If you look at the new album, yeah, lyrics doesn't have solos from Richie and Glenn back mm-hmm. 
like the old lyric sheets would. Right. Yeah. They're not being up front. I don't yeah. believe for a second that Glenn is playing at all on this album. Now, one, yeah. one guy left a comment on my review of the album saying, look, Glenn helped write all these songs. So you got to give him credit for that. I'm like, yes. All right. That, I, I'll give Glenn all the credit in the world for these kick-ass songs. But I think it's unfortunate they don't let us know that it's not well, it's Richie. Right. I think I think what it's more a case of, and there's two songs that, you know, I was doing some research uh, that they said had a little bit more input from Glenn. Uh, but I think it's more a case of, like, Glenn listening to it and saying, yeah, that's good, or yeah. change that. Uh, you know, it's less him playing on it, you know. And right. poor guy, I mean, you know. I mean, he can't he help it, you know. Yeah, he can't, he can't right. do it. It's like... You know his brain's still there, but he just can't do it, and it, it's mm-hmm. sad. But I think, as a Priest fan, you can tell that. You can tell this is Richie Faulkner playing lead, playing rhythm, you know, playing yeah. all this shit. And he's amazing, but it is one sound, yeah. you know, and it's one style. And that would, and it's a minor negative because I love Richie Faulkner. I think he's mm-hmm. great, and I think. He has that pre-spirit. One other negative I would say is on my first couple initial listens, I was listening to this in my car. And I was kind of like, uh, on the drum sound on this album. Hmm. Now, I love Scott Travis. I, I think he's by far the most talented drummer that they ever had. You know, there's Ooh. nobody. He can play everything, you know. Uh, you know, then it would be Les Banks, you know, right. and Dave Holland. But I wasn't sure about the drum sound. But then when I listened to it with headphones on, it sounded much better. Mm, um, okay. I felt, um, yeah, I think he's a fantastic drummer. Um, but he definitely, you know, he pushes this band with his drumming. They've never had a drummer that can play the heavy shit the way he can. That's true. But I, I think they get stuck in that heaviness route where i'd like to see him deviate a little bit more but anyway back to serpent the king like who in the fuck is the person like picking what songs are released first and shit because to me if you would have put this out first you know you would have got people a lot more excited than you know panic attack absolutely again, I, I like panic attack but I saw so many reviews of people making comments. The minute they hear those fucking cheesy ass fucking keyboards, you know, it was a turnoff. Where if you put mm-hmm. on something like this, you're going to excite Judas Priest fans, right? You know? uh, and you're going to make them feel like, okay, this is something I'm going to go spend money on. This is something I'm going to be a first day buyer. Because unfortunately, there might be a lot of people who checked out after Panic Attack. I mean, it's so hard to get sometimes like old fans into new shit as it is. Yep. And if you don't come out the gate right away, like giving them a reason, they might be like, eh, I'm not going to check it out. If you're lucky, they might go see them if they come live. But I, I mean, you know, you want to talk about bad management, Ralph. I think that's, you know, like they should have picked a different fucking intro for this album. I think much more people would have been excited about this release. What do you think of the song, Mick? Dick? Oh, I, I mean, this song Fuckers. is fucking awesome. I'm serpent the king. I mean, fucking to me, this is classic Judas Priest through and through. You know I mean, um, whenever I first heard it, I was like, you know, when that riff starts, I'm like, dude, that is like so like um, fucking hellbent for leather. It's straight yeah. from that era. You know, like it's so like it's kind of I look at this song is kind of like, how did I say it? It's kind of like eat me alive. Meets like um, hellbent for leather meets something from uh, Firepower. Fucking love, love this song, dude. It's great. And uh, I think, like, the biggest star on this fucking song is Rob Halford, dude. you got to give it up mm-hmm. fucking to the metal god because, dude, Rob's what? Going to be 73 this year? Mm-hmm. And the vo- his voice in this song, I think that's the best singing. One of the best jobs Rob's done singing since he's been uh, back in Priest, which has now been 20 years, you know? Love this fucking song. And if it was... Um, and if it was the choice of Dick Twatkins, not Jane Andrews, this would have been the first track on the album. Oh yeah, without the without the shitty turbo techno intro. 
mean, it just went right into that skull crushing riff. And the first you know? thing should have been the first. And, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, this song fucking rolls in. Awesome. Well, what do you think of the title track, Invincible Shield? I mean, kind of go up against the last one. I mean, I think it just kind of keeps the, keeps the flow of this uh, release going. I think it's a great song, you know. I mean, kind of once again, though, like, like it's kind of going back into that that painkiller fan servicing style. But I fucking love that, you know. I love Priest. I think it's a good song. I don't think it's as good as Serpent and the King, but I do like it over Panic Attack. I think it's a good song. Uh, what do you think, Ralph? I love it. I think it's a great, it, it's great to have a song like Serpent and the King and Invincible Shield back to back because they're both pummeling. Right. Like, you know, the shade ain't happening yet. And right. I think it's great. I think it's a fantastic song. Fast, heavy, killer. Love it. That's why, man, the first time I put it on this album, I was like, damn, there's some good shit that wasn't released yet. You know? Right. Did you guys watch the music video of it? Yeah. Yeah. They're in a room. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and it's Glenn, Richie, and Andy Snape. Yeah. But 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 every time they shoot, uh, you see Glenn, he's like doing like a little rhythm. You even see <laughs> yeah. and and uh, Richie doing the guitar solos together yeah. with Glenn in the back going, you know. And right, right. And Glenn's just holding one fretted note and he's yeah. just doing that. And it's so heartbreaking to see that, man. It, no, it's heartbreaking yeah. to us. Ian laughs his ass off at that. Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> Parkinson's an attack. Parkinson's an attack. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Ian has no heart. Awful. No heart. I love the guy, though. I love him. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a oh, Panic Attack was originally called Parkinson Attack, but then he had stop to it. Yeah. You know, she's like, I don't think so. Uh-uh. <laughs> I, I think you should start a speed metal band with Michael J. Fox. I mean, they'd just be like, Aah! "Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, that'd make, uh, man, that'd make uh, Slayer sound like Wayne Chung. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is a great title track. Um, I love this one. To me, it's Priest through and through. I mean, yeah, it's Painkiller Priest, uh, but it's kick ass, and it's the longest track on the album. It's over six minutes, but it never bores me. Right. You know, and it's one of those like, man, when I saw the even the, the title of the album, when they announced Invincible Shield, I was like, Ugh, that's kind of a lame title, you know, and then I saw the album cover and like I haven't enjoyed a Priest album cover since Painkiller. And I, and I think, you know, they had some of the best album covers of all time. I hate mm-hmm. this computer generated album cover. Yeah, I think it's don't, really. Don't you think like, look at this album cover. Doesn't it look like like it's like mouthwash? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like, you know, like if you go in a store to buy mouthwash, don't you think yeah. mouthwash would kind of like look like that? Yeah. It's like Invincible the most soda. metal. <laughs> it's the most metal baking soda you could buy. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know. But I get it. I mean, albums don't sell like they used to. So people can't spin what they used to. That's you true. know, on, on album covers. And that's just an unfortunate reality. But, uh, and again, that's a minor gripe. It should be about the music. I don't, and I, another th- I don't dislike it. I think it's all right. Another I think it would have. I like the back. The back is pretty. Yeah. yeah, much better. Much better. Yeah, I agree. I think this would have looked better if it was just black and chrome. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah. With just yeah, a black but, background with yeah, a chrome without, shield. Yeah, without, yeah, I don't know. To, to to me, come up with something that rivals fucking screaming and and defenders, you know. And I, I love like I don't know they, they all kind of went together back in the day, right. um, you know. And another thing I can't stand is the new priest logo with the fucking hate it, hate it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. With the thing is the T. No, give yeah. me the classic priest fucking logo. Where did, where did that start? That started with Angel Retribution, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the first one. Yep. Yeah, because they had they had the even worse logo during the Ripper years. That one was terrible. That was terrible. You know what I really love is the. Bless you. you. I just said, you know what I really like? I like sneezing. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the Sad Wings of Destiny and the Sin After Sin logo? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wicked, man. Right. The more yeah. gothic kind of. It's kind of, yeah. satanic, you know, with a little devil tail. And yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, the one with Stained Class is the classic. That's that the best priest logo. That's my favorite. But, man, I was at, at that KK Priest show. I saw mm-hmm. a guy that had, a, it, it only had the logo. Oh, sin after sin, sad wings. That's yeah, nice. only had that logo. I was like, "Bro, where'd you get that? I need that shirt." And he said, "He, I found it on eBay." So I went on eBay. I can't find it, man. Right. Anybody out there knows a shirt with the original logo from Sad Wings of Destiny? Only that. I want that shirt. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah, love this track. I'll take the next one, "Devil in Disguise." Uh, <laughs> Another one. Holy fuck. Why wasn't this a single? Good question. This, this is catchy Judas Priest at its best. You know, mm-hmm. this is one that I think could bring in, you know, not only, you know, classic Judas Priest fans, but, you know, people who don't know Judas Priest, if they heard this, it's catchy without being too poppy. Right. Uh, and, and this band, when they do catchy shit, they can do it great, you know. Sometimes they do it shitty. Sometimes they do it great. I think this is a great example. And, man, my attitude's really changing about this. I remember, you know, Ralph, you let me know that, uh, you know, Martin Popoff had an advanced copy, and he said it was their best since – what do you say their best since – He said – been for leather? No. He said some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, some crazy shit like that. That's what he's done since Hellbent for leather. I was like, wow. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck is he smoking? You know, and I'm worried right. about his mental state. You I know, want some like, of that. You know, and, and that was judged it by hearing the first three songs that I heard. You know, I'm like, how? With those three songs on the album, how? You know? Mm-hmm. But man, I hear this, and I was like, fuck, this album is fucking stacked already. I mean, this is right. some really good shit. I love Devil in Disguise. I, I think it's great. It's a little nod back to... 80s priest uh yet you know still sounds modern of course but it has that you know catchiness that has single written all over it again who is picking this shit because you could have got a lot more people excited about this album if you release shit like this what do you think dick twackins oh dude now this right here this is the fucking judas priest that i love I mean, to me the uh, devil in the sky is arkins back to like late 70s like priest, like like a helmet for leather era. Um, to me, this song could be like the bastard brother or the bastard child of Killing Machine. I mean, it has that kind of that similar groove. That dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. It's got that. Dude. It's got that cool sexuality to it. You know, it's kind of more rock and priest. This is the priest that I fucking love. The British still screamer for vengeance. More rocking Judas Priest as opposed to the painkiller thrashy style i think this song's excellent if i had to pick a top four on uh this it would be my top four favorite songs for sure and devil in disguise kicks ass nice ralph awesome song what i hear is uh it has a vibe of march of the dam from i can hear that too yeah Yeah. and, and uh man i love that song that's a, a kill one. underrated song off that album. I agree. Show the damn that riffage. It's on here. It's on the Devil in the Sky. They, they kind of, you know. But you know, if you listen to March of the Dam, it has that '80s vibe too. Mm-hmm. That's why this is all connected. But right. yeah, man. I mean, here's the first song that's not 100 miles an hour, and it made sense. I was like, "Fuck, this is great." Right. March of the Dam, that's on uh, Redeemer, right? Yeah, Redeemer. So yep. I need to go back and listen to that one. That and I think Nostradamus are like my two least listened to albums. And yeah. I, yeah. I think I was kind of, because Nostradamus I thought was so bad, I didn't give that a fair shake. I need to go back and check it out. But I do know that, so I love it, March of the Dam. All right, Redeemer of Souls is really good. The yeah. only thing I don't like about it is, is the production on it. Um, the production on it weighs that album down a lot to me. And it was produced by Glenn Tipton. So. That explains it. Right. There you go. Sorry, Glenn, but yeah. 
<laughs> you can tell he right. since when he was producing those albums. Yeah. 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 Uh, like, damn. Yeah. Brother, even your production's shaky. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's terrible. I'm going. That's down. awful, man. But, yeah. Ralph, what do you think of Gates of Hell? I love it. Another great one, man. The intro reminds me a little bit of Bloodstone. Mm. Got that Bloodstone ish thing, and it's a kick ass too, man. Awesome solo on it. And uh, yeah, Gates of Hell, another winner. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I love this one. Now, this is one that reminds me of Older Priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, this is, you know, again, I think we all talked about it. We've listened to this album like four or five times already. Uh, yep. And I listened to it right before we started recording. I listened to it again. And this one just grabbed me. I'm like, God damn, is this album front loaded? You know, this mm-hmm. shit's like one after another. I'm really enjoying like even fucking Invincible Shield, which I was like, eh, at first, you know, I'm loving it. And then you get into this and this is like, oh, and that's what I really want out of a new priest album. I would like something that harkens back, uh, you know, granted though they've always been a band that you know a lot of the albums not they're not alike you know they always go different places and i respect that but there you know there's a big part of me like you know play something classic that harkens back to the shit i grew up on and to me this one doesn't i mean i fucking love this track what do you think mick oh okay well yeah um let's with this album gotta be honest probably after i'd heard it maybe for the third time fully at first, yeah, I mean, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I was like, this, this is good. This is good. But compared to the last album, Firepower, I felt kind of bummed out. I was like, I mean, it's good, but it's not as good. It's nowhere near close. And then last night, after spending 10 hours in the studio with Wild Ride, I was riding home, and I was so fucking tired and mentally exhausted. And I'm sitting there driving my car, and this song kicks on. And for the first time, it hit me, and I was like, "Dude, what the fuck?" And I sit there and I crank the volume up, and that's when this um, release really fucking hit me. And just like I think, whenever um, Richie Faulkner talked about there's certain kind of prog progness to this album, progressive elements, I think this is kind of one of the songs he's talking about because if you listen to that middle solo section or the solo section song, that fucking solo is blistering bit. And of course, it's just Richie. But as he likes to trade off, he kind of gives the illusion, you know, that it's him and Glenn playing, you know, because he'll kind of play a little line, then he'll take a quick little break, and then he'll start up the lead again. And that solo to me, if you really haven't listened to it, play that solo and check that out. I think this fucking song's awesome. And for me, it's neck and neck with Serpent the King as the best track on this album. And I really hope they play it live because I'll probably shit my pants. Nice. Ralph? On purpose. Uh, yeah. we're, uh, <laughs> I already talked about that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I did too. Okay. Crown of Horns, Mick. Uh, Crown of Horns, yeah. Uh, the, the first, was it the first three singles that were released? This is the one that I really fucking loved. I'm like, dude, this is kind of getting back to that Defenders of the Faith style priest. Uh, Scream for Vengeance era. You know, I mean, to me, it's kind of like in line with, with let's say, Fever or, uh, or, or like, what's the song? Uh, what's the song on, on fucking Defenders? A Night Comes Down. It, you know, it's kind of right in line with that. It's not quite a power ballad, but it's not really a rocker either. Fucking love this song, dude. And I love whenever Alfred's singing on the second verse. Just the way that he sings something like, and it rules inside of me. Just the way that he sings that line, goosebumps. Or as Ralph always says, it makes the fur rise. Love Crown of Horns, dude. It's fucking cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, five songs deep into this, and I'm beginning to think like, fuck. Do I like this more than firepower, you know, or people yeah. riding saying, you know, this is the best in a long time. I'm like, holy shit. And then we get to this one. And this is one my opinion has not changed on. I am not a fan of this song. Really? 
I like oh, I like the the sentiment of it, you know, like what he's talking about and summing up all history and stuff he's been through. But to me, this one is a step back. Um, and it just shows me like they could not do you know, again. This isn't really a ballad, but it is a slower tempo song. Right. But, you know, it's to me, it's nowhere near like when night comes down or something like that. Or Well, no, it's not. It's, you know, victim of changes or, you know, any other the you know the slower type song i mean to me this isn't even a fucking blood red skies uh i think it's better this this, ugh, this is a <laughs> a filler track to me i get why they did it i i can see more people liking this than me but this is not what i want out of priest it's too safe too metal the road doesn't doesn't excite me and then I'm like, ah, oh, shit, you know, is this album front loaded? You know, did they blow their fucking wad, you know, uh, or what? I don't know. Not a big fan. What do you think, Ralph? This, this to me, man, is the worst song on here. Really? <laughs> I don't oh. get it, man. <laughs> I don't get this song. It oh, was, that's all good. I, I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, God damn, man. These are, singles are getting worse and worse. <laughs> I listened to it a couple more times. It's just the fur did not rise, Mick. Oh my God! All right, the next one is "God Is My Witness," the return of the metallic attack. That's what I'm talking about right here. As Lemmy is my witness, this song kicks much ass. We're back in track. I have no problems with this song. What do you think, Mick? Um. Okay. So we are what track? This is track number seven. I mean, to me, this song is good. It's good. I mean, to me, like, it doesn't really stand out. I mean, to me, it just kind of goes back to that painkiller, servicing kind of style song. I mean, I like it. It doesn't suck. But as I look at the track list, this is probably one of my two least favorite songs. Got to be honest. I like Crown of Horns better. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm, I'm on Team Ralph here because to me, they bounce back like a motherfucker. Oh. I'm like, fuck, yeah. You know, I got worried after that. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, and then I hear this. Love it. Ian, are you sure you like The Breakfast Club? Love it. <laughs> it's a classic. John Hughes motherfucking Gaty's classic. It's a great and movie. I love this, <laughs> and I love this song. Um, killer track. Again, dude. This is one that would have been a much better single. You know, like, what the fuck are y'all thinking? And it's nice to know that they still got, you know, it gave me hope for the rest of the album. When I heard yeah. this, I was like, okay, I'm not giving up. Yeah, that crown of horns is a fucking uh, load of crap. Hey, hey, like hey, one, hey, hey, Ian. Yeah. You know, if you don't like crown of horns, then don't listen to it. Okay, I will. I, I, I mean, I won't. I mean, yeah. yeah. Fuck it. I'll, I'll delete it out of the track list. I shut uh, you off. Yeah, yeah. You I, changed my mind. I show <laughs> you. Don't listen. Don't like it. Don't watch. Don't listen. I own you. Look at me. I can't handle my liquor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll take the next one. Trial by Fire, the second release. Um... This one was a grower for me. I was really unimpressed the first time I heard it. Um, but listening to it, you know, in the, you know, the album sequence and everything, I liked it more. I still won't say that I love it, but I like it more than it did. I think, again, I, I know it sounds superficial and weird, but that intro to fucking uh, Panic Attack fucking soured me so much, I think. I didn't even give this a fair shake. I still don't think, I think there's a thousand times better songs on here than Trial by Fire, but I do like it better. What do you think, Dick? Uh, let's see. What does Dick think? Uh, Trial by Fire, man. I think this fucking song's really good. Really good. Uh, I love the part where he's like, uh, bound and abused, branded a liar. I have endured Trial by Fire. I love that, dude. I'll be at work sometimes. 
And this song, that chorus, is it's like an earworm, dude. It gets stuck in my head all the fucking time. I think this is a cool fucking tune. And, uh, you know, like reading the lyrics, you know, I think that this uh, song might have been influenced maybe by the trial that they went through, you know, like over the uh, the Better By You, Better Than Me, you know, um, kind of stuff, you know, I mean, possibly. And, you know, for, those of, for those of you who don't know, uh, your day job is, you know, you're a male exotic dancer. You this know? is true. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're playing this at work and shaking your shit for the ladies, Oh, yeah. Are the ladies feeling this track at all? Do you Dude. think, or are they just looking at your junk? Oh, I know from experience that trial by fire absolutely floods the basements. Let's just say okay. that. Do and you, I'm there to mop it up. Do you do? Do you do the? <laughs> do you do the helicopter? I try. I, I, <laughs> I try to do, it, but it's, you know, it's hard when you're, you know, when you got three inches of man meat down there. But you know, yeah, I give it my best shot. You know. It's a cute whirly bird, I'll tell you that. <laughs> there you go. There. Three well, inches soft. <laughs> well, all right, trial by fire. I still don't like it. This is the part of Rob Hoffer that likes the Breakfast Club. Uh, oh no! That wrote this song. But you know why he likes the <laughs> Breakfast Club? Because he's gay. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. You right. Get the horns. <laughs> so uh, trial by fire. I don't like it. I shouldn't listen to it. I don't like <laughs> it. Don't listen to it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, escape from escape from. Cool. I like it. Killer riffs. Uh, killer vibe to the riffs. I dig it, man. Escape reality. One, two, thumbs up. I like it. That, therefore, I'm going to listen to it again. Makes sense. All right. Well, I will probably skip this one. I could do without this. Mm. Uh, this is one of two songs that uh, were said to have greater involvement uh, by Glenn Tipton. Really? And, and yeah. Um, I was curious of which songs he played on, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying he played on this, but these are ones that I believe he had more of a hand in writing. Gotcha. And you could kind of see that because this is more of a simpler riff. Yeah. Maybe something he could play. Um, and again, God, I hate even saying that because Glenn's so fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. But I, I can kind of see it. Um, to me, this one sounds not only musically, but vocally. And then somebody else pointed this out, and I thought they were spot on. Very Ozzy. Yeah. If you yep. if you listen to his vocals in this, very Ozzy, the way he does the medleys of it and shit like that. Uh, but unfortunately, to me, it's very simplistic and generic as modern Ozzy is. Um, <laughs> then, I could do. Then why listen to it? I won't. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's disappointing. I was excited because I already had this information about the two songs that Glenn was more involved with. So I was kind of trepidatious and excited at the same time. But yeah, this song, uh, definitely a weak one. And I think this could have been changed out for one of the bonus tracks. <laughs> I'll say that much. Yeah. 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 So All right. What do you, th what do you think Dick Twack ends? I mean, it's a, I mean, this song is cool. You know, I mean, I like it. You know, I mean, uh, you know, got to be honest, man. I'm not really one to really skip tracks on albums, you know, because to me, you, you know, when you put an album on, you know, it's it's the experience. It's the artist experience, you know, now that you're invited on. And, you know, unless the song fucking really, really, really sucks, I won't skip tracks, you know. But with that being said, I will say that, this is probably one of my two least favorite songs on the album. And it sucks because this is kind of a cool part of Judas Priest that we really haven't seen a whole lot and that it's kind of doomy and sludgy. It's kind of, it's very Black Sabbath-like, you know? Kind of like uh, um, um, on the last album, Firepower, like Lone Wolf, you know? This song's kind of in line with that, but I think that song's way fucking better than this. It's, it's but, Black Sabbath, but like 13 Black Sabbath. You know, I think it's better than that. But yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's way better than any of that garbage. But yeah. I mean, it's okay. But uh, 
I would definitely trade it out for one of the bonus tracks for sure. Hey, I agree. Hey, you don't like it, don't listen. Hey, hey. <laughs> what's what's the next one? What do you think of the next one, Mick? Sun, Sons of Thunder. Sons yeah. of Thunder. Oh, dude. Now this is we're we're fucking cooking again. We're cooking again after a couple mid pace songs, mid tempo songs. We're back to that fucking early eighties, late seventies priest, man. I mean, it's right in line with let's say riding on the wind. Uh, fucking screaming for vengeance, Steeler. You know this song kicks ass. It, it's, it's really cool. It's got a very kind of trying to think how to say this without. Uh, I don't know. I could picture maybe like uh, somebody like Wasp doing this song, or maybe like the heavier side of Dawkins. You know, it's kind of got a little bit of a L.A. metal um, kind of sound to it. Uh, Sons of Thunder, I think, is badass. This is the priest that I fucking want. And what I would love, personally, is, let's say, if Priest did do another album in three or four years, which I, which I really hope they do, I would love to hear, like, a modern take on, like, Point of Entry. That kind of style. I think that'd be fucking rad. Yeah. Like Point of Entry. So, dude, Sons of Thunder, two thumbs up. I, I really do like Sons of Thunder. I'm going to sound like I'm being negative here, but I'm not really. I think it's a really good song, but I do hear it as a filler. Really? Killer filler. But it's one of those songs that I don't think they're going to perform live. It just said, let's just put another kick ass song on here. And I don't think they really. Uh, it's hard for me to say they didn't keep it in the oven too long because. It doesn't mm. sound like it's missing any killer element. Mm. <laughs> I just feel like it's a song that they didn't really, I don't know. They just do like it. think too much, but it's still killer. I think it's killer. Right. That's what I feel about Sons of Thunder. Ian Wadzilla Wadley, Breakfast. Uh, <laughs> well, this, this is the other one that was uh, heavily, uh, he heavily. Heavily involved with Glenn Tipton. Okay. And un unfortunately for me, it's another pass. I don't think it's horrible, but like Ralph said, I, I think it sounds like filler, and I think they can do better. And, yeah, I got to say, even though there's some stellar tracks on this second side, it's definitely front-loaded, man, because that first side I yeah. love. And actually, Ralph, you, ha you, you have the vinyl. What what's the last song on side one of the vinyl? Well, if you had to split one, it up that way, it's uh, Gates of Hell. Oh, well, nice! It's, it's the last song on side one. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so front loaded, <laughs> right? Wait, wait, right, that right there, like 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 track two through four. I think those are the best songs on the album. I'm sorry, the last track on side one is The Serpent and the King. Oh, shit. oh weird. Yeah. Um, that's only like, two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn. It's three. Because on my track, my track listing, Serpent the King's song number two. Yeah. Huh. That's how this album is because it's four vinyl. It's three vinyl. Two two vinyls. So there's just two oh. songs on side A. Yeah, and three songs. Uh, oh. The rest of the sides have three songs. Weird. Okay. Weird. All Damn. right. Yeah. Uh, again, back to Sons of Thunder. Uh, to me, it's a throwaway. Uh, but mercifully, it's only two minutes and 58 seconds. Right. Uh, then we go on to what is the proper album closer, Gods in the Sky. And I just learned today that this is kind of a, um, uh, what's the proper word? Like, like a tribute to Lemmy mm -hmm. and Dio. Yeah, and this is uh, Rob singing about them. I do like this song. I do like it, um, but there's something missing. It could be a little bit more epic, uh, mm -hmm. especially considering the, the topic of the song. I mean, if you're, you're singing about those two giants, it's a good song. Um, uh, like Ralph was saying about a song earlier, it's going to sound like I don't like it as much as I do. I do like it, mm -hmm. but I think it it could go to the next level, and it doesn't quite go there. And especially for the al the proper album closer, uh, I might have picked a different one. Um, 
you know, which is weird. Like sometimes I really like an epic song to close the album, but maybe one of the faster songs on this would have been like a good, like leave you want more. Um, right. The title track maybe. Yeah. But it, it is a good one. It is a good mm -hmm. one. I just don't think it achieves greatness. What do you think, Ralph? Um, I don't remember what I said on my review. I probably thought, but this definitely grew on me. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a bad song at all, actually, where I think I think I gave it a bad review. When I was, yeah, I saw some people say this is the worst track on the album, and I would, uh, no, there's no Yeah, way. I got to disagree with that. I don't think so, but it's it's grown on me. I dig it. It's all right. All right. All right. Dick Twalkins. Giants in the Sky. I mean, kind of like you all. I mean, I think it's cool. Um, you know, you know I mean? I really haven't spent enough time with this. I mean, I've listened to it five times, you know, and I, it really started to kick in with me, maybe about listening to it about the fourth time, you know? So, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm dumping on this album because I'm not. It's a great fucking album. But Giants in the Sky is just okay. You know, now maybe give me another month and this might be one of my top two tracks, you know? But it's a cool song, you know? Uh, it's kind of like, uh, what's the other one? Kind of like Escape from Reality. I would probably trade those two songs for two of the bonus tracks. I mean, nice. uh, but it's cool, yeah. All right, well, that that is the end of the proper album, but there is an EP uh, that comes with the record of bonus tracks, three tracks. And Mick, why don't you take the first one, Fight for Your Life, or Fight Stop. of Your Life, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Fight for Your Life. Okay, this fight fucking, yeah, okay, Fight of Your Life. Okay, not Fighting for Life, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, fight of Your Life, dude, this fucking song kicks ass, Okay. Uh, I'm looking at this. If Dick Twatkins produced Invincible Shield, Dick Twatkins would have taken off, let's say, Scrape from Reality, and I would have put on Fight for Your Life. This song kicks ass. Whenever the uh, the riff for, or, uh, excuse me, um, when the riff, the riff first, first kicks in, to me, do you guys hear um, um, the riff of God of Thunder at all? Uh, da -bum, dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah, it's it sounds a lot like that, dude. God of Thunder, and you know, and just hearing it, this song to me is one of the most different songs on the album. Because if I was gonna guess, I would think that this is one that Glenn had a had a big heavy hand in. And uh, um, you know, like um, earlier we talked about how like lots of the leads are Richie, and it just kind of sounds like it's only him. He's just playing with himself. The solo on this song. I really don't believe is Richie Faulkner. It is the, I think it's probably one of the best leads on this fucking album. And to me, I know it isn't Glenn Tipton. I want to think it is, but there's no fucking way. I'm really curious if it's Snape. That solo is awesome. On, to me, that's what makes the damn song, the solo. So yeah, um, fucking listen to that again and see if you think it sounds like Richie Faulkner. I don't think it does. So fight of your life, I think it's killer, and I would have put it as an official track on the album. Love it. All right. Uh, I love this track. Yeah. Uh, but shows how little you know uh, Dick Watkins because <laughs> this was written and performed by Steve Brown of Trickster. Uh, <laughs> this was originally supposed to be on 10,000 volts. I'm sure. Uh, but was deemed too good. All right. Uh, no, I love this track. And again, I think Ooh. this harkens back to an earlier pre-sound. Yeah. And oh yeah, I would have traded out, you know, the two Glenn songs, uh, Crown of Fucking Worms, Herms, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, <laughs> take that shit off, put this one on. Um I think it's a really good track. And a lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, you see I think they did this with the Redeemer of Souls. There was a whole nother like EP of tracks that didn't make it. Oh yeah, a lot was. of times it's like fuck, you know, too many songs here, too many. You know, right. uh, Sabbath did it with thirteen. You know, it, it's it's like goddamn, pick the ten best. You know, and like, you know, there's eleven songs on the album proper, and three bonus tracks. Mm -hmm. My dream set list for this album would be ten tracks. I agree. And, th I agree. and this would be one that I would, 
interchange with one of the three earlier ones that I didn't care for. Uh, I dig this one a lot. What do you think, Ralph? I think it sucks. What? Wow. Really? Oh, man. Listen, I go, I know why this didn't make it. <coughs> oh, shit. I, okay. I didn't like it at all. At all. Wow. Yep. And the next one, I didn't like much either. But it's the best of the bonus tracks. Uh, Vicious Circle. It was all right. But again, I can hear why it didn't make the album. Mm-hmm. But not a fan of Vicious Circles either, even though it's my favorite of the three. And my least favorite of the three is the next one. So go ahead, Mick. What do you think of uh, uh, Vicious Circle? Vicious Circle, uh, to me, I mean, it's okay. Um, I mean, I won't skip it. I think it's good. But, uh, you know, considering the, um, let's say, the 14 tracks on the album, I think it's one of the worst songs on the album. I I just would have cut it off the bonus tracks, honestly. You know, it's okay, but yeah, nothing special. Kind of generic, and I'm in mean, the words of Lars Ulrich, it's kind of stock. Yeah. Uh, well, I like it better than you guys, and I still see why it was left off the album. But I still might have interchanged this one, you know, with you know one of the other songs I didn't like because. While it's not great, I like it better than the three songs that I'm kind of on on this album. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's not a standout. It's filler, but <laughs> there's nothing I hate about it. But then we get to the last track, Holy Moly, The Lodger. And this one I was interested in because Bob Holligan Jr., uh, mm-hmm. who's written with the band in the past. He wrote some Heads Are Gonna Roll, which I think we'd all agree is an mm-hmm. awesome Priest track. Uh, mm-hmm. He wrote some shit on Halford's Resurrection album. Yeah, um, yeah. Take These Chains? Yeah, Take These Chains. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, he's got, a, he, and he's got a good track record. Ian and I saw them play Break These Chains for the very first time. Yeah. Awesome. How did it sound? It sounded great. Awesome. They didn't play yeah. it on the Street of Store. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great that's track. A killer, yeah. That's a killer track. Uh, but we get to this one, man. And the first listen, uh, I'll, I'll never forget this because I, I downloaded it early in the morning and I, I get to work at like fucking 5 a.m. And I'm sucks. walking into my building and this is on my fucking AirPods and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? You know, like, <laughs> holy fuck. And like, this is like Loch Ness part two. I mean, oh, man, I see why this was. I can't even see how this made, like, the fucking EP. Mm. I'm like, holy shit, this is bad. This does not sound like Judas Priest. And I saw one review where somebody was saying they likened this to, like, a James Bond theme song. Mm, that's I, was, I was like, I was like, hmm, I could kind of see that, you know. doesn't mean I mm. like it. I, I mean, I love James Bond, but it, it has, like, a different kind of quality about it. And I gotta say, on repeated listens, I don't hate it as bad as I initially did, but I still there's nothing Judas Priest about this, and and I'm I'm not a fan. This is some Loch Ness territory. This is some Nostradamus shit. Not a <laughs> fan, and uh, I don't think this should have been released. I, I think they made a bad choice here. What do you think, Ralph? Worst song on the whole thing. Uh, hmm. I, I like Crown of Horns and all that shit better. This is terrible. It's yeah. terrible, man. Every time I hear it, I, it less, I got the reverse reaction. I don't like it. Vengeance is mine. And it's, yeah, and you like Loch Ness. And I love, no, I love Loch Ness. I think oh my God. epic tune. But I understand everybody hates it but me. I think Mick likes it too. We are idiots, dude. I guess we are. Hell yeah. All right. Well, what do you think of the Lodger, Mick? Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. To officially join the cult of the greatness of Loch Ness, it's just me and Ralph, because I think Loch Ness fucking rules, dude. Yes. Love, I love that song. What's not to like about it? I mean, people Do you say, like Nostradamus, too? Not really. I think it's the worst <laughs> priest album. <laughs> I think it's the worst release with Halford on vocals. I like yeah. it better than the two uh, um, fucking Ripper Owens albums, but uh, with Rob, I think it's the worst. But yeah, but Loch Ness, dude, such a cool song. It's heavy as fuck. What is cooler than a song about the fucking Loch Ness monster, dude? Come on. It's a good song. Oh, come get out. 
Stretching <laughs> 10 minutes makes it even more awesome. Absolutely, dude. And that fucking solo at the end, KK Downing's ripping it on the fucking whammy bar. Excellent. But uh, that's Lockness. We're not talking about Lock. We're talking about The Lodger. So if Invincible Shield was produced by yours truly, Wild Ride bassist Dick Twatkins, okay, like I said earlier, I would have taken Escape from Reality off and I would have replaced that with Fight of Your Life. And then let's see. I think I would have taken off. You got, uh, no. you know, fuck it. I think I would have taken off Giants in the Sky and I would have replaced it with the Lodger. What? I, think the, I do. Yeah, dude, absolutely. I think the Lodger is really cool, man. It's really theatrical. It's kind of almost got a Alice Cooper kind of vibe to it. It's very theatrical. Welcome to my nightmare kind of. You know, it's got like kind of like um, fucking orchestration in it and all that kind of pompous yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, more like welcome to my nightmare. Oh, no, it's way better than any of that <laughs> fucking turd. <laughs> that album sucks. Yeah. No, but this, this is uh, this is Operation Mindcrime too bad. <laughs> uh, I think it's better than that too, man. But no, um, The Lodger, if you listen to the lyrics and the story Rob's telling, it's almost kind of like, a, like um, The Ripper Part 2. It's like a sequel to The Ripper. You know, like it's talking about a killer stalking the streets and looking for victims and shit. I think it's kind of neat, man. I dig the lodger, and to me, that would have been a great official closer for Invincible Shield. So yeah. Right. Wow. I know, mind wow. blown. And I like Lockness. Imagine that. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Well, one other thing I forgot to mention. Oh fuck. And then I deleted the page. Hold on, I'll bring it right back. There are two tracks on here that were co-produced by Tom Allman. Oh, okay. And let me bring it up here and I'll see. Um, I found it somewhere. Yeah, I'm curious to know what two tracks those are. Yeah, oh, I am too. Uh, Sons of Thunder and Giants in the Sky were co-produced by Tom Allman. Dude, really? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't put them as my favorites, but I, I dig both tunes. Yeah, they're yeah. both good songs, absolutely. And I think most of us would agree, you know, he produced their best albums, you yeah. know. Uh, yeah, at least in the East, their best album. That is yeah. the best priest, hands down. What was his yeah. first first with them? Was it was it, was it Unleashed in the, East? in the East? Yeah. And then then he produced everything from uh Priest in the East through Ram It Down. Gotcha. Uh yeah. and then they brought Pain him back. I mean, was done. Though, uh that was Chris Tangiris. Right, right, right. Uh, right. Produced that. Um, but yeah, I was glad to see him brought back. Um, but yeah, I know. I think it's, uh, it's a great album, much it better is. than I thought it was going to be, right. uh, much better. Uh, I still think it's kind of being, uh, over appreciated. I mean, sometimes we do that, you know, when something new comes out from a band we love we get so excited you know kind of like how it was when the black album came out i was like oh this is great and then three months later i was like yeah this ain't shit compared to the rest so right. the true test of time is how often do we go back to it you know mm -hmm. uh i think that was a great thing about firepower i think that's an album that we kept going back to and most judas priest fans kept right. going back to you know there it wasn't just that initial hey it's new from this band we love it mm -hmm. stood the test of time i do think this one will but i do too i think this one's a grower yeah because like i said yeah. i've listened to it five times and each time i listen to it it gets better because at first first listen i i was like no this is okay this is okay and each time i hear it i find new things i, I love about it like yeah. that solo on the on Gates of Hell, it's fucking. Crazy. And I might end up liking it better than Firepower. Yeah, I you know, possibly. I, I, and I don't know because I don't know if there's a song on here. I mean, I mean, there's some great songs, but like the great stuff on Firepower, I really love. But there's some stuff yeah. on Firepower even I could do without. There's and a so couple I'm, songs. I don't think there's any songs on the new one as good as Traitors Gate, Specters, Never. No surrender. No yeah. surrender is amazing. Uh, yeah. Those yeah. songs on fire, firepower. I don't think there's any songs on the new one that good. Yeah, yeah. I love the song "Necromancer." 
What's your all thoughts on that? They opened with that when I saw it. I yeah. seen that, dude. That's yeah. fucking killer. So jealous of you guys. Um, you saw that. Uh, that was a great show. Yeah. Great show. Yeah. All I right. missed that tool. Well, that, that is our like fresh review of uh, Judas Priest's uh, Invincible Shield. So I recommend to everybody go go buy it out. They come by you. Go see this motherfucker. You know. And, and here's another thing I'm kind of interested in is how this translates live because this is an album that you know a lot of portions of this was started even before the pandemic yep. you know which is crazy because you think about how long ago that's been now Four they years. started working on this album in 2020 um so you know and I'm, i was blown away by rob's vocals on the sound for somebody his age to sound this good can he still pull it off live? You know, is this shit going to be great? Are they, what songs are they going to play off this album? Are they going to play too many? Are they going to play not enough? Yeah. You know, like personally, I to see, and we'll right. find out tomorrow. Tomorrow is the first gig. So we'll see what, nice. you know, what golden oldies they bring back, you know, what new ones they play off of this, cool. you know, unfortunately, I think they're going to play crown of horns, but probably. So um, this tour, is this the tour with Saxon and Dry Heap? Yes, Saxon and Dry Heap, they're, they're starting out in Europe, and then they're coming to the States. But the actual mm-hmm. States uh, dates aren't very uh, – I believe they're going to be coming back. There's going to be another round. They're starting in Europe. I hope so. They come to the States. They go back to Europe. I do think there'll be another round just because of all the cities that they've left out so far. I right. do believe there'll be another round, but uh, if there is, I'm definitely going to see it, and I'm very excited to see what the set list is for this tour. Absolutely. And I'll see it, you know. I'm yeah, happy, I'm, I'm happy that I'm, Saxon and Uriah Heap are coming my way next month. Dude, same. I'm going to see them here uh, April 28th. I'm fucking psyched, man. It's around that time. I'm seeing them around that time. It, April 20-some shit. Cool. And nice. I'm seeing them at a really nice venue. Oh, right, same here. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, now it's time to go into pick of the week. And Dick Twakin, since you are a special guest, you get to go first. What is your pick of the week? All right. Pick of the week for me. Like earlier, I was, you know, I was debating this, you know, and uh, I feel like this is a really important part of your all show. And, you know, and instead of going back and saying, well, listen to, Judas Priest staying class or listen to Kiss Hotter Than Hell or something. Dude, because we all know that shit. We know it's great. I'm going to go ahead and say, dude, check out some fucking newer bands, dude. Like, check out the new Haunt album, which I'm wearing their shirt. The new Haunt album. Dream I've got Rush. it. I haven't listened to it yet. How do you like it? it? It's really good. I, you know, got, I mean, I, dude, I've been a fan since the start of the band. And I'm buddies with Trevor William Church. Who's the the on the brainchild of Haunt? Yeah, you know, and we're friends. We're cool. Uh, but I gotta be honest, their last couple releases, because dude, he is a workhorse, man. Haunt's been in existence since 2018, and I believe he's put out like 12 releases with yeah. fucking eight full length albums. I kind of felt like the last three were kind of they seem kind of rush jobs a little bit. I mean, they're good, but I didn't think they were as good as the like earlier stuff. But this new one, Dreamers. It's fucking awesome. It's quality, dude. I you know? I love I love the cover of Send Me an Angel. That's yeah, a gay, me, that's a it's on this song album. that I love. And yeah. the, the funny thing when when I got the album, I was like, ooh, I wonder if this is a cover of the you know the same Gaty song that I know yeah. and love. And it was, and I was like, really good. But then I listened to a couple other songs on the album, mm-hmm. and I just didn't like it as much. I mean, I've got to listen to it as a whole. Right, and I think I right. listened like a couple songs after. You don't because, because you don't like it, so don't listen. <laughs> right, because Ian but, hates uh, metal, right? <laughs> yeah, I hate that shit. It's right, terrible. Right. It's for nerds. Um, right. But no, I need to check it out. But yeah, the, the other shit that I heard, I didn't like as much as like the earlier stuff. But mm-hmm. I need to give it a a full listen. But they are a good band, very talented. Yeah, I would say haunt, uh, haunt dreamers. And, uh, dude, check out my buddies in fucking Savage Master, man. Savage yeah. Master is an excellent band from here in Louisville, Kentucky. And, you know, and those are the fucking bands to me. Savage Master and The Haunt and The Enforcers and Night Demon, which Ralph knows. I know. Night wasn't Demon, Brian, yeah. what, um, was it Brian drum, Wilson? My drummer is now their drummer. 
Right. That's that. That's cool shit. You know, and for all of us, you know, metalheads that love the classic stuff like Priest and Saxon, and these are the bands that are going to carry the fucking flag into the future, dude. And they need exposure, you know. So definitely check out, yeah, Night Demon Haunt, Savage Master, Enforcer, and fucking Wild Ride. That's my pick yeah. of the week. Expose yourself to new bands. Right. Ralph, do you have a pick of the week yet? No, no, but I do expose myself to new bands. When new bands come here, I go, <laughs> they come here and put my dick. Oh, shit. I like exposing uh, my dick to new bands. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, my. Actually, you know, I have a pick of the week, but I would like to end the show with my pick of the week. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, we got to do fan of the week after, but yeah, you can go last. Uh, my pick of the week is a new album, but it's by a, another legacy band that we talked about earlier in the news, and that is Ministry, the new album, Hopium hmm. for the Masses. Cool. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with this one, and there's some cool uh, appearances. Uh, Pepper Keenan from Down and COCs on Goddamn White Trash. Uh, there's another song that uh, Jello Biafra from uh, Dead Kennedys, of course, is on. Um, I think it's solid. I mean, it, it's not, I wouldn't call it classic, but I would definitely call it solid. And if you've liked the last couple of ministry albums, I think you're going to like this one. Um, I love that they kept it short. It's only nine tracks. And I think that's to the benefit of the album. We, we say this a million times, too many modern albums, you know, they, they want to fill up that fucking CD and they put every thought that came into their head. Right. That's usually a bad choice. Uh, but this is nine tracks, one cover. Uh, I think it's good ministry, man. I dig it. Cool. Hopium I'll for check the it out. That is my pick of the week. Ralph? All right. My pick of the week, and you know, I mean, like all of us, I mean, we're all honest on what we like. We all are not going to say we like something if we don't like something, right? If you don't like it, don't listen to it. If you don't like it, don't. <laughs> exactly. That's the new um, slogan for the show. I'm not just bringing this up because we have their bass player as a guest because oh, awesome. I love Bushy. And Bushy, not a lot of people know this, but he has a band called Sammy Belcher where he pretends to write Sammy Hagar songs. I love Bushy, but he sucks. But Mick, hmm. Mick fucking, his band. And the album I want to plug is the last one. Gasoline Alley. Yeah. That song, Gasoline Alley, y'all have to like punch this shit up. They made a video <laughs> for it. It's fucking badass, man. Dude, and, thank you, Ralph. Dude, you know what song I really like, man? Don't say no. <laughs> Isn't that like a bonus track on the thing? It was a bonus track, yeah. It's yeah. Like one of my favorite song there. I was like, I love that fucking song. So and, dude, like our audience, that's one of our like our audience really digs that song. That's one of our favorites with the fans. Yeah, uh, like, why would this be a bonus track? Six Six Gun Shooter. Another, six Gun Shooter is cool. Another yeah. rock and tune, man. Hold on me. Alone. Solid. Check it out, man. Bandcamp. You need yeah, a, thank you. You need to support this shit. This shit sounds like crap when it's streaming. You have to buy a physical copy because that way it sounds better. Okay. I agree, yes. man. But right, because the first time I heard th this priest release, the new album, I listened to it on streaming, and that's that's why I think at first I was like, "Ooh, yuck." Then I bought the CD at Target, and I was like, "Okay, streaming fucking sucks, dude. It does. It does." Yeah. But yeah, that's my pick of the week. Everybody, go check out Wild Ride, Gas yes, Thank you, man. Valley, and I am waiting with bated breath for the new album from Wild Ride. <laughs> You're gonna love it, man. It's really good. It's. Uh, I look forward to it. Cool. Um, we're hoping that it'll be out. Uh, I'd probably say late summer, early fall. That, that's what we're shooting for. So. Nice. Yeah, and I'm not. And again, I'm not saying this because you're on the show and I'm plugging it. Because, right. You know, honestly, I've never said this before, but I got to be honest. Eddie and the Booth mm -hmm. suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Y'all yeah. suck. But I love yeah. whatever. I love, Whatever. You know, I love Bushy, but you guys suck. You got to leave shit for the big boys like like Wild Ride Mick and Dick Twalkins. Dick Twalkins. That's right, dude. Thank you, man. Thank you. I mean, yeah, everybody definitely check that out. And now it's time to go into Fan of the Week. And I have two this week. 
two very important people to bring up. Uh, the first one is with us right now, the amazing Dick Twatkins. And brother, you are definitely old school. You've been here forever. You know, yeah. you, you know, never left, never waver, wavered. You're always a presence on the, on the page and your support for the show. And you make everybody, you know, you got great posts that people enjoy. Never, and everybody never, knows you. Never, Thanks, ever, man. never, ever starts drama. No, yeah. fuck drama, dude. Life's too short for that crap, man. Yeah. yeah, but you uh, know, I, and, you know, and uh, the fucking group, the way I see it, the group's about fun, dude, and celebrating our favorite bands and music. It we is, love. it is a fun, you know, it is a fun group now. We brought back the spirit, of the right? But, you know, uh, and I'll go ahead and say it. I'm sorry, Ian, but uh, dude, that day when I read that you guys, when you guys split up, you know, when the show ended, when you guys had your feud. I just I was laying in bed that morning and I remember looking at my phone and I remember seeing a post from one of you. I think it might have been Ralph, but uh that fucking sucked, dude. That shit hit me so hard, man. You know, you know, and and me and like Eddie talked, you know, me and my Italian rock and roll brother from another mother, Edwin Penistrasi, we were texting each other going, Can't believe this fucking shit, dude. So you guys <laughs> can't do that again. Don't have no fucking nah. feuds. Keep it going, guys. No, no, I, no, I got to no, tell you. Don't worry, uh, Mick. I am heavily medicated on street drugs. And when <laughs> I'm all fucked up on street drugs, I love you. And I don't like well, that's good. Keep uh, doing them. <laughs> and I tell you what, I got to say, ever since, uh, you know, Ralph and I restarted this and everything, uh, this is the, the best we've ever gotten along. I think the most fun we've ever had doing this show. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we appreciate each other more and appreciate the, the fans. And it's just, that's why when I saw, I, I know Johnny Vogan got a little like, I didn't say, you know, you know, you miss said what your glory you're days are not over. Oh, by the way, no, they're not. By the way, and you are wrong. It okay. Was Johnny Vogan that said glory days. Oh, was it? Go look at that thread again. It was somebody else that said the glory days. Vogan never said it. Oh, it was, hmm. I think it was Bruce Springsteen said uh, Glory Days. Um, but no, I, I love doing this show. I know uh, some of the episodes, it's not been as, you know, we used to be every week like clockwork. Sometimes now we take weeks off and stuff, but, you know, life happens, shit happens. But when you get it, it's fucking quality. And I still love doing this show and appreciate, you know, people like you who have been here you know, never left. You keep the faith. You know, we love you guys. We believe in you. And it's just been great to have you on this show. And I can't wait to have nice, you back. You. Uh, well, hopefully also, next week. And also, Yeah, that sounds good to me. Also, definitely got to check out Mick Watkins' Radical Rock Reviews. Radical, yeah, radical yes. Rock and Record Reviews. Yeah. Yes. Dude, yeah. that shit's awesome. Dude, Stop. thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, the one I, that really stuck to my mind is the cheap trick ranking? Oh, the cheap trick ranking. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Like totally opposite than mine. But I yeah. still love it. I was like, this shit is cool. Great. Hey, at least you're aware of all the cheap trick albums. Hey, I love them. All right, if you like the shitty cheap trick albums, it's all right. Mick. But it was a great episode. <laughs> and Mick is great. He's very animated. Oh, always yeah. screaming and grabbing his tits, saying titillating. And oh, like yeah. That. By titillating orgasmic, yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Go check out, nice. oh, yeah, I was... and subscribe to uh radical rock reviews, it's very titillating, yeah. Hell thank yeah. you. I, I was watching your, your BOC ranking that you did a few years ago, yeah, and I was like, fuck, fentanyl made it to Kentucky. Uh, oh, dude, it was it was created here in Kentucky along with meth. <laughs> <you know? laughs> But uh, yeah. no, I'm, I'm super excited to have you back. I'm so glad you were here. You did not let me down. Uh, oh. You were a great guest and looking forward to next many week. more having you on here. Hey, next, oh, dude, anytime, man. It's I'm back next week. I got to get writing down my, man, ranking BOC albums. Uh, the bottom ones are going to be easy for me. But yeah. going upwards is going to be tough, even yeah. though I know I'm stubborn. My number one is going to be my number one. 
next oh. week. Oh, yeah, same here. You know, and I'll say... Interestingly, like, my number one has changed for the first time in 30 years. Really? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mine is... So, like, um, let me guess. It's Club Ninja. My, my, yes. Mine is like <laughs> three times in 10 years or 20 years. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, um, next week, our favorite BOC albums. And right I have to... I have to mention one other fan of the week before we go. Uh, I said we're going to have a co one, and I got to think Scott Wark from Ontario, Canada, because he is the one who sent me the uh, the post that said or the instant message said you got to you got to do something about fucking Chuck Charles Vance, <laughs> <laughs> and wow. and I did something and and I didn't. I didn't ban Chuck because God damn it, there's still I know there's a good person inside of Chuck, um, but then he drinks uh, <laughs> and posts. Uh, and then that's bad. But he sent me that and I did something. I, I took part of it. And I'm so thankful because what I saw on our Facebook page this week was great. And it did remind me of the glory days of the page and the variety and the fun and the different shit that our Facebook group is. Because it is a great collection of you crazy motherfuckers, man. And mm-hmm. you are all fucking crazy, devoted, fucking awesome fucking people that love mm-hmm. this show and show their support. And that's why, you know, it's so awesome having you on the show today, Mick. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's about you know, fucking there. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, yeah, we're, we're, you, you know, I was saying this to Ian earlier, I said, why haven't we had Mick Watkins on our show? And Ian said, because fuck him. And I was like, no, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, if he really loved us, he would have paid for a fan episode, but he don't like us that much. <laughs> That's right. true. I didn't ever. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'd never paid for a fan episode. That's all right, you cheap fuck. We love hey, you. I am cheap. I am cheap. <laughs> we love you. And uh, man, I love you guys too. Turned out great. And if you enjoyed this episode, man, come back next week. When we rank the studio albums of BOC, and uh, very much looking forward to that, and looking forward to busting Dick Twatkin's balls over his <laughs> opinions. They changed a little bit, dude. You're gonna be shocked. Okay, be shocked. I'll be interested to see. But come check that out next week on the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. Ah, yeah. Bang bang pizza skulls. <laughs>